Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. <laughs> Indeed. Felder, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Spider, no spider? Uh, make up your mind, I guess? <laughs> uh, so I've done a little bit off stream. Uh, we're actually gradually clearing out Soma. Uh, you may have noticed that there's actually spaceships going back and forth as opposed to the dwindling number that we were seeing before. Uh, although I don't know if it's all completely fixed just yet. We just went to Deadwood and back. Uh, threw together a little bit of energy beam receiving on the old nuclear plant. Um, I actually got rid of the inserters um, for the uranium fuel cells for now, and I want to see how it goes. Um, we've got a bot network, you can always put them back if we have to. Um... Obviously, with the energy beam receiver being able to go to 10,000 degrees, and the heat pipe, uh, I believe, can only go to 1,000, um, having just one on the side is a bit suboptimal. In hindsight, uh, it may be bad enough that, um, that I should have built two of these, uh, one, of e one on each side. And then we could attach um, a pair of uh, energy beam emitters uh, to... Well, I guess if we only have six of these, we can't do that. Um, this is actually outputting six gigawatts, 55% transmission effect, uh, efficiency. Uh, and this is a approximately... I think it's exactly, in theory, a 2.4 gigawatt nuclear power plant. Uh, so we are sending more than enough energy for all of this to run at full speed. Um, but I don't think... If the heat pipe only goes to a thousand degrees... Uh, I think we're not going to get heat all the way to the end on the opposite side, and I should have built this on both sides. Um, but it'll probably be sufficient for this outpost. Um, I, I think. We got 28, so 14 gigawatts. No, sorry, uh, 14, 1.4 gigawatts. Uh, so... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be struggling. I also noticed um, there's a problem with this build which I didn't address previously, which is that petroleum... Well, I, I mean, I've seen the problem a couple of times, but I didn't know how severe it was. Uh, petroleum builds up and gets full, and we didn't have a sufficient prioritization system to consume the petroleum before the light oil. Um, we're not cracking any light to petroleum, it's just uh, just the petroleum we can't help but make. Um, so what I threw together to to do a prioritization here without changing the shape of things is we're only going to put uh, solid fuel from light oil into the uh, solid rocket fuel recipe. If there's less than, say, 5k uh, petroleum in this tank. Which I don't know... Let's see. We are theoretically net negative on petroleum gas here. If everything's running full speed all the time. Uh, in 
fact, theoretically, we're net negative on everything but solid rock, uh, solid and solid rocket fuel and solid fuel. So I'm actually really surprised that we accumulate petroleum here. Um, I guess because we're net positive on. Uh, no, we're net negative. Hold on. We are net positive on solid rocket fuel, so if all of these are going full speed all the time, it's going to back up, and then we're just throwing more light oil into it than petroleum. Well, regardless, um, since we don't have it like a container between these two to measure solid fuel, um, I'm just going to read from the inputs instead. And we're only going to make uh, solid fuel, we're only going to use the solid fuel from light oil when petroleum is sufficiently low. Remains to be seen if that's working. Um, I actually got this working again by deleting the petroleum gas. As much as that feels like a bit of a waste. Um, we don't have a use for it over here. And we're not going into Stella to take some petroleum ba gas back to Nalvis. Okay. Uh, I also ran around on Nalvis. <laughs> wow, it's not that bad. Uh, I also ran around on Nalvis upgrading the beacons on oil fields um, and creating some new ones. Uh, so hopefully we are saturating crude oil at this point. I think we are. Um, and after doing that, I looked around and noticed, oh, we've actually got... We're actually completely full on light oil, at least on the output stations. I think it was actually everywhere. Um, at all of these stations. Uh, all, all of these blocks making uh, oil products. And we still don't have enough uh, solid rocket fuel. So I threw together a block uh, to remedy that. I think this will probably be enough to overconsume our light oil. Um, preferably uh, preferably it'll stop by meeting the demand for liquid rocket fuel. Um, I also bumped up the priority a little on the liquid rocket fuel tanks that supply the interstellar spaceships as opposed to the others. Um, because if this stuff stops, everything stops. And the stuff that goes to orbit is a relatively low priority. Whiskers, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so things do seem to be working a bit more smoothly now. Uh, I gave up on clearing Quillian, at least for now, because that thick carpet of biters just goes on practically forever. Uh, we're currently trying to clear Soma. And the fact that we can see the glaives doing their thing uh, certainly tells us that there are still some biters. Kellogg's, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I may tap into Soma for some more uh, core fragments, but I don't know just how much crude oil fragments are helping us at this point. Um, although we could definitely go ahead and update the uh, the processing block um, to the design that uses 
wide area beacons and has the cannon chests uh, built into it. Uh, I still haven't fixed the uh, the broken inserters on Henium. So I need to do that. I would go there directly right now, except we don't have that much liquid rocket fuel after landing on Deadwood. Um, so I'm going to Navis Orbit first for a resupply. And I can't really think of much else that we've got going on. Uh, little things I was doing yesterday after the stream. Um, I did hit upon that I should be just extending the robo network from the mall if I want to deconstruct all this stuff. It's definitely the much easier way to go about it. Um, although it does create... I mean, no matter how we go about this, this is going to create a lot of work for bots. Um, but I should just do it a chunk at a time. Hello, meme lords. Good gravy. This looks wonderful. Uh, beep, beep, beep. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That pattern looks kind of cool. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's much else going on. More oil, more solid rocket fuel. Went to Deadwood to throw some uh, energy beaming in, just like we've got. Uh, just like we've got in our local star, except we haven't really utilized it to its fullest just yet. We've been playing with glaives. Uh, we've been recharging... Oh, are we here? Oh, 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 I forgot I wasn't actually... I, was, I forgot I wasn't actually flying in that ship at the moment. Um, it is significantly faster than the outposter. But I haven't got a way for it to take off from the ground. Otherwise, I would have taken it into Stella to build the, uh, uh, to build the energy beaming at the other stars. I guess I could go in this ship and send the outposter by remote control to go to the planets. We're kind of struggling to keep up with the enormous demand of uh, scaffolding, which we've been taking for granted for some time. Um, should probably double this. What do we use the most of here? It's one to one to one. Okay. It should be pretty slow, actually. I did remove the beacons because, uh, really, we're just depending on the trains coming in as the bottleneck at the moment. 15.6 per second is probably fine if we can keep it going. Uh, let's just make this, like... Schedule a delivery when we're down to 2,000. Cool. Um, so what's next? I do believe... How much uh, li uh, solid rocket fuel are we making out of this block, I wonder? Uh, 63.48 per second. For solid rocket fuel, that is quite fast. Um, I know... 
well, it just demonstrated it, actually. That's cool. Surprisingly quickly. Um, we can't have two pumps at the same third of a uh, fluid wagon connecting at the same time. So what I've got here is simply uh, connecting to the nearest uh, storage tank. And it says light oil has to be less than 24k. Um, is how this works. All right, spiders, back to the mall, please. And... I wonder if plastic has recovered yet. That would be a no. Why do we not have enough plastic? Oh. We're out of coal again. I was going to say, last I checked, the last few times, plastic is flowing everywhere I look, but I don't know if it's catching up or if we actually need more production still. We should be getting some... Oh, there it is. Deadwood 3 is actually leaving. Okay. Uh, I was going to say we should be getting some deliveries of coal relatively soon. Deadwood 8 is 10 minutes away. Uh, each of these are supplying 48k. Um, so this is 48k, this is 48k, this is 48k, this is 48k. This is 48k. That's uh, core fragments. Out of each core fragment, we get. How much coal exactly? Larry Kaberger, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see. We've got prod sixes, that's good. Um. 16 becomes 10, but then we get plus 56% productivity. So 16 becomes 15.6. It's almost one to one. A single coal core fragment becomes one coal, just a little bit less than that. And if we gave it tier 7 uh, productivity modules, we could actually bump it up to slightly more than one, I think. Let's see, productivity plus 16% as opposed to plus 14%. That's another plus 8% here, um, which gets us over the line to where we're getting slightly more than one coal per coal core fragment. I was going to say that makes it so that um, coal core fragments are more storage dense for coal than coal itself. Um, but that's already true, actually. Cool. Um, I wonder if... Well, well, we'll soon see if this is enough to keep up. How close are we? 27 minutes. Ouch. Um, where's our ship? Oh, this is the outposter. This is not bringing 48,000 coal core fragments. Um, I also want to go to Calamity to set up um, energy beaming. We're actually running Calamity... Oh, no, we've got nuclear power here as well. I've, I can't believe I forgot that. 
Um, but we could definitely patch that to use energy beaming as well. Are we still using the rocket? Yeah, we are. This is just for uh, vanilla erudite. But for the coal fragments, we're delivering it by spaceship. Uh, this is an older design, but it does get rid of the petroleum reliably. So in a sense, it's better. Good to know I probably won't have to patch that one. Why don't we continue with some space science um, while we're waiting on a couple of things. Products finished. 1600 per machine. That's good. That's good as well. And... Why do we have fusion test data on only one half of this belt? Uh, we've got output here. There's just literally one little piece of belt missing. Make sure they're not crossing over a spaceship. Um... We need to launch probes from uh, from around the star in order to get the fourth data card for tier four energy. So I can't build that right now. Um, so maybe let's work on, I'm thinking material science. Uh, material science 4 is probably going to be the most exciting one if I have to pick just one more. Um, those are some upgrades, not that big a deal. Speed module 8. I can't believe we're actually creeping towards the maximum tier. Uh, material science pack 4, heavy assembly. Heavy assembly gives us some really late game stuff. I can't believe I can't believe it's taken this long to catch a whiff of the top tier of belts though. Like you have to have built so much of your base with regular space belt before you finally get this, and it's like, why even bother upgrading to it at that point? Um, Astro 4 is our next spaceship upgrade, and then after that we need deep space. Oh, this is by 500, that's pretty huge. Um, bio, plague, rocket, if I ever want to take that, uh, bio 4 gives us productivity bonus as well. I should just go for clicking on this and seeing what's under it. We do need it for Naquium processing, but we also need tier 4 astro. Uh, nanomaterial, everything. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's a clear choice. Um, and uh, Astro Science 4? We need that for Naquium anyway. Uh, lattice Pressure Vessel, I think I remember, is a prerequisite for something interesting. No, we're not, it, it really doesn't matter which other ones we do, I think, um, in which order, not by much. Exp 
explosive data go burn. Fantastic. All right. Uh, what's the other science? It's Astro, where we need to do the asteroid belt probe. And we've got... Oh, I think I did some of these already. Wait, which ones are the tier... It should be these last three. X-ray, radio, gamma. I've already done those. Oh, have we not... Astro... We've got Astro 4 unlocked. Which data cards go into Astro 4? Dark Energy, Micro, Zero, and Asteroid. It's these dark blue ones. They're just not in the same order that I would expect. Okay, so Gravimetrics Facility, Particle Collider, Laser Facility. Um, micro Black Hole is one physical, two fluids in, and then Junk Data, Fluid, and Micro Black Hole Data out. I think that's going to be the same... I think that's going to be the exact same layout as we have here. Again. So, let's copy that somewhere. Um, probably around here is fine. I forgot I made this temporary remote. Let's get our Spidertron. The one that I split off from the group. To follow the leader again. And I'll move that. Okay. Scaffolding spiders. Please go over here. And we're going to make a new block. I should really... Oh, is this it? Uh, yes and no. I want this block but filled in. Uh, it's easier for now if I just do this and then remove any old power poles. And then we'll place this here. Alright. Spiders, did they reach their destination? Wait, what are you doing here? Did you fix... Where was that one belt missing? I I can't actually remember. There was one little bit of belt missing in one of our newer builds. I think this was it, actually. Yeah, that was it. Asandanima? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do you have the Railblox blueprint for sharing? Uh, yes. Um, I believe it's already up. I'll just double check that right now. Uh, let's see, we've got... I can see the depot from the ground. I can see the Omni Smelter. Uh, Rail Blueprint Book. Here we go. Johnny Depot? Like, <laughs> uh, oh no. Um, site's being a little bit weird. Please load. There we go. Six lane empty rail. This has got a lot of old stuff in it as well. Um, parking module. Left. Only intersection. There really is a lot of stuff in here. The train blueprint book looks like an older version. Yeah. 
Okay, um, if you need it this second, there's a 18 stop LCC CCL blueprint that includes the rail block on the outside of it, but I'll just take a moment and copy that in now. Uh, but first I want to make sure I don't forget what I was doing here. Um, where are our construction spiders? Oh, they're already sitting in the middle. Cool. Alright, so blueprint. Uh, two-way rail. Um, I'll take this one that doesn't have the power poles. Actually, I'll include the big power poles. You can always remove those more easily. Okay, create. Uh, blueprint string. Rail block. Two way roundabout rail block. And I'll do a little snip of this. Description. Uh, one way drive street rail with two way roundabouts for easy exit entry. Into Tag. Uh, train. I guess we'll call it a junction. A train track, that's fine. Fantastic. More of a rectangle design, I like your square one more. Yeah, I love the square one much better. Um, okay, let's copy the link for this one. There it is. Cool. And our spiders have just about finished placing our scaffolding. Although, they've been oddly selective about which parts they fill in. Thank you very much, no worries. Alright, uh, so I think our next step... ...is to copy this build. And then, actually, I'll do it the less stressful way. I'll turn off the input stations. And then we'll copy-paste this. And then I'll turn the input stations back on. And then there's no rush to switch off these constant combinators the instant they get placed. Okay, so which recipe was it? Um, micro black hole data. And it doesn't look like we're going to have another instance of this exact block in Astro 4. Uh, micro black hole data. There it is. And we'll just confirm supercooled thermofluid goes in here, which is 
going to go here. We change this to blank data card. And this one. I probably could have just saved a moment by copy pasting this actually. Since that's the exact same station. Uh, and which fluid are we getting? Particle stream? Particle stream requester. Oh, that's fine actually. Train is already on its way. So we've got a whopping 5.7, 5.8 per second micro black dot black hole data out of this entire half block. Um, definitely might upgrade that one day when we finish the game and decide to just push things as fast as we can. Uh, let's update our station name here. Micro black hole data, and this one will still be exactly the same. Junk data and twenty-five degree thermofluid. Okay. Um, I don't know why that didn't get removed earlier. Old power poles. When I used this deconstruction planner. Oh, it was the copy-paste, so there must be some down here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Okay, one down. Uh, two to go other than the uh, asteroid belt probe. Uh, so we've got one solid, one fluid in... And we need to recycle negative pressure data. And other than that, it is final product, junk data, and fluid out. And it happens in a laser facility. I think we've already got this layout somewhere. Um... These ones... Is this it? Laser facility is the exact same shape as the nuclear facility. We are recycling uranium-235 here by taking from... Uh, we have a filtered output. We take the uranium-235, put it in a box, and then direct insert it into this one. This part's unconditional. Uh, we read from the chest, and when we're taking from the belt for Uranium-235, we only pick up if this is empty. Um, what's the speed of this recipe? 10 seconds. And our new recipe is 10 seconds. 40%. 50%. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the percentage would have changed things, but that's going to be about the same, except instead of three solids in, it's just, it's even easier. One solid, one fluid. Uh, we should be able to fit the fluid input here. Very nice. Um, and we won't need the double belts for input. Cool. Uh, let's do a copy-paste edit for that build. We just need negative pressure data. That's over here. So this, this is as close as we're going to get. 
the, sh the shortest possible train trip already. Um, I'll actually use this one. I kind of wish the LTN stops would hover like um, uh, pylon substations. That would be very useful. Where's our liquid rocket fuel? I guess that's going to be taking its sweet t Wait, what? Hold on. How long have you been here? Oh. What are the odds of that? <laughs> we just caught the uh, liquid rocket fuel shuttle taking off. Doesn't happen very often. Jeez, it actually uses 11% of all of this fuel just to take off from Nalvis. Um, but it is it does give us the benefit of... Well, actually, yeah, no, this is perfect. It, it tells us that it is worth doing. Because, apart from electricity, the only thing this runs on is solid uh, liquid rocket fuel. Um, at Tier 3 productivity mo uh, modules, we get a... Oh. We get an 8% productivity bonus. Does that mean this is a waste of liquid rocket fuel? <laughs> oh no. Uh, look, it's fine. Once we get tier 6s everywhere... I mean, once... Look, if, if we really wanted to, we could put tier 5s into all of our fuel production, and this would be more efficient. <laughs> oh no. Well, I'm not going to change it now. Everything is set up so once we've got the higher tier productivity modules, this will actually be saving us liquid rocket fuel. It's fine. You saw nothing. Alright, let's put in some request stations. Pickup station. Uh, we want to copy... Where was that nuclear build? This one? Let's turn off the input station. Uh, this is gonna be about the same. It's a pickup station, so it doesn't need to be switched off. Now that I look at it, why didn't I put... No, this, this is fine. Alright, switch this back on before we forget. And first things first, these will be laser facilities, but also um, we're not going to be having the double belt inputs. Well, I sincerely doubt we will. Laser facility. We want input and output facing this way. And let's set the recipe. We're doing zero point energy data. Let's just double check the fluids. Looking good. Give it some speed modules. Um, Cool. 
So how fast would this be? Uh, only 2.8 per second. I guess we'll be keeping those tier 6 speed modules in there. 2.89. Oh wait, that's... I'm looking at the wrong thing. No, that is 2.89. Okay. Uh, what about our physical inputs? Uh, only net 4.3 per second, so that's trivial. Um, so we're going to remove the long arm inserters. I think I have a... Let's do it this way. Say no to long arm inserters. Uh, this is going to go here, but flipped around. We're going to need fluid input. And... Uh, we're going to need to change these filters. So since there's three physical outputs, uh, this one... How fast are we going to be? Physical items. Very, very slow. Okay. Filter inserter will be fine. We're going to blacklist uh, negative pressure data. Oh, right. We've got five filters. We don't have to do it that way, but I will anyway. Um, so this would work with a stack filter inserter. And this is going to be whitelist. So everything but negative pressure data on this belt. Negative pressure data goes in here. Um, let's update those. And... All the little green dots become... Whitelist negative pressure data. And it's only negative pressure data that's coming in over here. So we don't need to set filters on a filter inserter on this side or anything. All we have to do is connect... Which one is it? This chest? Yeah. We want the inserters that are both facing this machine. Okay, so if negative... I could use a generic, but instead I'm going to say negative pressure data has to equal zero before before we take from the belt. And this one. Um, these two... I nearly connected the inserters. And... these two. Oh. So we should be able to just copy-paste that down. And... we're done. Um, I won't be doing the double belt inputs, but we do need space for the, uh, we, we do need space for the beacon. Um, let's just do, whoops, wait, no, don't undo, redo. Let's just copy paste this much. I'll delete this for the moment. And oh, uh, fluid input on this side is going to be a problem if I don't move the beacon. Unless we could just move all the, both of the beacons up two tiles.
they're covering equal amounts, but there's room uh, to change. how that's laid out. So that, that would go in there, and this one has to cover just the top three. I don't see why I'm struggling to save this horizontal space, actually. Um, because there's really no need. So, that can go there. We just won't be able to use a long arm to take from this one. Which is fine. Um, I need to make a temporary blueprint. Get rid of the stuff that I can't flip. Which is laser facility. Keep the beacons. Actually, that's all of it. Copy, paste, flip. Or rather, select, flip. And this goes... Pylon substation is in the way. How dare you. Let's move this all the way over to the left. And... Where's that blueprint? Over here. So we're looking at uh, only 11.6 0-point energy data out of this whole thing. Which means if we double it, we can fit it all in one belt. physical input. Uh, this belt layout is a bit much for what we need. Uh, we're consuming net 17.3. Okay, it's one belt. Just the one belt. So we're just going to go for the most basic merge and split. Um, do it over this way, I suppose. I guess we're not really splitting. Not till we get over here. Uh, what are we looking for? Negative pressure data. And this part can be... Absolutely sure we get all of those. Negative pressure data. Uh, we're going to be consuming it so slowly that I think we can wait till we're down to like 2,000 before we resupply it. I need to throw in two train loads of data for that. Uh, 
Okay, so splitter goes here. I guess there's no reason that has to be exactly there. It's a little bit better. That's five tiles. Fantastic. Hi, how many products are there in space exploration? Looks like hundreds. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. This is just the science. Um, well, okay, in fairness, there are different recipes to do the same thing. Um, well, let's ask FNEI how many things match with the word data. We've got one, two, three, four, five. 13 times 2, 4, 6, 7, plus 3. Uh, 94 different things with the word data in it. With this of a base, what are your SPM goals right now? Um, SPM, I'm just... I'm more or less just going to crank it at the end of the game. Um... Which, that that's one of the reasons I'm leaving half of blocks uh, not filled. Which I should have done much earlier so that we could save UPS. Um, we're basically just going to see how much we can keep up with input-wise. I don't have a like specific number in mind. Um, but for now, it's more about just getting the different resources, uh, the different sciences unlocked. Alright, I think we're ready. And let's name this... Uh, zero Point Energy Data. Also, this station will be named a bit differently. Junk data card and negative 10 degree thermofluid. Oops. Negative 10. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. We need to filter out the junk data cards. Um, okay, let's do that. Junk, and that's going to go here, this can go here, of course that would line up inconveniently. Um, I'll just double check, even if we double this we're getting 23 plus 11 we can fit it all on one belt. Probably even if we go to tier 9 modules. Uh, let's throw in a... Loader. And connect this like so. This goes here. Uh... Each divided by negative 24 is not going to be so good because we're measuring the fluids as well. I, or I could have changed the inserter to say junk data card has to be less than or equal to zero. Fantastic. I play K2 plus SE. What's your CPU? Uh, it is... 10.0700F, if I recall correctly. Nine hundred in SE is a bit unreasonable, I think. Not sure if that changes a lot about that. Space science is just so slow. Going for 900 right now, but I don't want to run into UPS problems, I see. 
Um, yeah, I don't think my CPU is... Well, I'm sure my CPU isn't the bottleneck. I actually upgraded the RAM uh, in the middle of this playthrough. And we got like 10 more UPS at the time. Um, but the CPU is Core i7 10700F. <clears throat> and the RAM is the best that I can manage on this motherboard. Um, it's actually capped by the motherboard at uh, 2933 megahertz. No path. Did we not finish this uh, rail block? There we go. Need a setup command? Yeah, I keep forgetting. Uh, let me just add that to my to-do list. Actually, if you'll indulge me for just a second. I'll make a private channel on my own, uh, on my Discord. It'll be a good spot to, um keep track of these things. I have been keeping track of them in various other ways, but this will be a bit more organized. Uh, what What's the command people usually try to check out the, uh, the specs? Probably specs. Or just do a specs, there we go. Uh, fat boy not so slim, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Alright, here is our data. And we still need fluid. So let's drop our usual... setup for that. Connect that there since it's a bit less intrusive. Uh, we need negative 273 degree thermofluid. Replace it when it gets down to 20k. Uh, and we are, in fact, going to need to connect these input pipes somewhere. I would prefer to run it down here. Oh, I should have moved the whole thing over one tile to the right. No, it's too late. Unless I want to pick up all that data. Tragic. Uh, let's drop some threebies in here. The... As always, the rate of the thermofluid, it's really not going to matter where we put our pipes, as long as they get, as long as they're all connected. Um, I suppose I could still do it this way. Just going to look a little bit weird. And where's our thermo fluid? Oh, it's train limit one, and it's no train limit is three. Wait, what are we? How much? How much is this? Give me a pylon. That's the only downside of having a combolus combinatorless balanced unloader. Because I don't know exactly how much we've got. 13k. What? We're looking for 18k. Oh, this stacks to 50. What was I thinking? This should be 10,000. Well, it's fine. I don't care if there's a bit extra negative pressure data here for a while. Wait. Oh, I thought it was... 
I think I read the train that was still going home as delivering more. Um, why do we not have negative 273 degree thermo fluid though? I'm pretty sure it's set up correctly on this end, which makes me worried. Uh, nope, here it is. We've got plenty of negative 273. What is this train? Oh. I thought I fixed this. I fixed it over here. But not over here. That station simply shouldn't exist. Let's send the scaffolding spiders. Uh, through here on the way back and they'll pick up that station as for you you can leave okay so do we have our why is it taking so long to get negative 273 degree thermo fluid here We've got probably train limit one. There's definitely enough here, though. Yeah, I don't understand why we haven't got a train scheduled just yet. Uh, also, what's your specs? Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Depending on the RAM die, the timings could be tightened by overclocking. A 2933 could potentially run as a 3200. Interesting. Uh, it is the motherboard, though, that's the, the reason I can't go to 3200. The RAM itself is 3200. Uh, I don't know if that's problem or not. Subhan, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Midden, uh, for reference, I think in my first SE K2 playthrough I had like 10 SPM. Most motherboards have an overclocking settings. I'll try looking into it. Simon says, Midden, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Fatboy, uh, so the specs are the CPU I mentioned a minute ago, 10700F uh, i7. Uh, the RAM is 3200 MHz and 16 GB. Um, and the graphics card is not too exciting. I mean, it's, it's a good, like, mid-range graphics card. Why do I look it up again? Um... I still haven't completely gotten used to Windows 10, to be honest. Properties, uh, devices, device manager. Uh, display adapters. GeForce 10, uh, GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. <clears throat> I meant glasses, <laughs> but computer specs are fine too. You leave the speed at 2933, that doesn't change. You change the latency of the RAM. Basically, a 2933 with low latency has comparable performance to a 3200 with higher latency. That's very interesting, especially considering um, from what I've found lately as given within reasonable limits, uh, RAM is the bottleneck for Factorio, uh, it seems. Micro black hole data. Oh, it's here. Boom gotcha. Boom gotcha. Wait, is this... 
Oh. Oh, we already did two of these. So we've only got one left before we go for... Before we need to do the belt probe to finish tier 4 science. Okay then. Um... What was I doing? Do we have the data already? I don't see it. There's no thermofluid. Still. Why is there no thermofluid? Supercooled thermofluid, negative 273 degrees. I didn't, like, accidentally use a recipe signal for it or something. Supercooled thermofluid. 120,000. Maybe I accidentally gave it a positive or missed a zero or something. The wire is connected to the logistic train stop input. Uh, I should update the station name while I'm at it. We've definitely got... Uh, I think we've got plenty of thermofluid here. Yeah, it's this one is, definitely has 100k. And if this station wasn't working, this would be completely full. This one also definitely has 100k. Provide threshold 100k. Um, we can definitely allow short trains to pick up fluid, although I don't think we're using... Oh, yes, we are. Meowning? Sydney Kenson von Ice T. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. RAM and CPU cache. Or oh, you overclocked the front side bus. Uh, do you need the request threshold combi signal? Request threshold. Oh, I've only got the stack threshold. Yes, you're right. Hoisted by my own changing the default settings so that I always have to put this stuff in petard. So we've got a request stack threshold. That'll work for physical I That took a second. Wow. Um, I forget what it's called exactly. There was a setting or two we played with with LTN updates per tick. Um... It hasn't really cost us anything, UPS-wise, from what I can see. Uh, and it's made the station scheduling much, 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 much more responsive. Which is nice when we're debugging something like this. We don't have to, like, make a change and then wait 20 seconds or so to see if it actually works. Okay. Um, so this, uh, this block should be working. But I would like to wait for the train to get here to confirm it. Um, can we check in on ourselves? Five minutes. Fantastic. We should already be in the solar system. Indeed. Uh, and we've got the Deadwood ships arriving as well. Those are the coal core fragments. Hopefully this one can take off before the next one gets here. Um, liquid rocket fuel, at least for the interstellar spaceships, is looking much healthier. I don't know to what extent... Oh, no... Uh, we're still struggling. <laughs> the weird f pulsing that these ships are doing is they're running an integrity check because they're trying to take off, because their resources are full, and they're only not taking off because we don't have enough liquid rocket fuel in the tanks. Um, we have added 
a bunch of solid rocket fuel production. Uh oh. Are we already running dry on the light oil? Uh, that would be a no. But with the shape of this old block, pumping the light oil down here is a little bit slow. 400 per second, actually. When the majority of this block is actually full of light oil. Oh, that's... That's suboptimal. Um, to be honest, I want to tear up all of these old oil blocks and replace them with the new design. But I wonder... I think we've still only got the one pipe going to light oil down here. Except we've got way more room if we want to give the light oil another path and some more pumps uh, to come down here. We can probably squeeze it through like this way, actually. I don't know why there's a underground pipe here. We could like connect it here, down through here, something like that. More pipes and pumps will help, indeed. Um, but also... So we do have a pump here. Uh, but I would like... Okay, this is... It, it's not technically dodgy, but I don't generally like going into this part of the rail block. Um... But we're doing this to patch a build that is... that we want to do away with relatively soon anyway. Uh, I should add a pump as well. At least one. Probably halfway through would be good. Okay. So we're going to copy-paste all this. And this. Something missing here. There's an old belt in the way. In fact, this one never had um, its output for lubricant connected properly. Let's turn on tree... Tree x-ray? Hello? There we go. Okay. This goes here. That should all be connected. Let's send our construction spiders uh, to pay these old blocks a visit. We also need to patch these ones as well. A little bit easier to see what's going to be able to be placed from the map view, I think. Okay. Uh, back to now this orbit. Uh, we haven't connected our output fluid. Probably should do that. Also, apparently we missed doing this. Uh, we did get our input fluid everywhere it needs to go, though. Um, I might take advantage of this space for connecting the output fluid since there's belts and stuff in the way down here. We 
we squeeze through this? Uh, we actually can't. Hmm. On second thought... Fifteen plus seven. There we go. We can shape this however we like. That figures. Uh, why don't we underground this here? That goes there. Remove this. Uh, maybe a nine tile over here. Six tiles, how dare you. Um, can we do three sevens? Yeah, we can. Let's get our construction spiders in range. And that one's already going to be connected. Uh, I do want that pump, actually. And we can get rid of these pipes now. That's actually a pretty neat... Um, solution. And there's our zero point energy data. Nice. Why is this one not running? Oh, it's still waiting to output fluid. Uh, I don't think I connected these up here. I was going to connect them like so, but I realize now that we can't actually do that the way I want to. Uh, I actually think this is going to be neater. Thank you for the follow, uh, Alec Bonus. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I, I like that better than having the pipe stick out up here. Even though the underground belts are a little excessive. Alright. That is our 11.5... 11 11.5? 11 11.5 point energy data per second. Uh, and we've got, we don't have a product here. What are we missing? Blank data cards. Uh, never enough blank data cards. Okay, sometimes there's a short-lived period where there's enough blank data cards. I still haven't done a new build for these, but we've been bottlenecked on resources for them whenever there's been a problem. Um, it, it's never just been the throughput that's the issue for blank data cards overall. Okay. We're just going to have to wait on those a bit. Um, we do have another copper core planet that we haven't exploited yet. So we can eventually, with infinite supply, uh, crank these blank data cards faster. But for now, this is probably fine. But also, also... Um, 
unless we go back to using cargo rockets, which I'm actually honestly tempted to do at this point. Uh, it's terrible admitting defeat like this, but it's just taking so much liquid rocket fuel to run shuttles for everything. Um, that space elevator would be such a game changer. Um, if, if I was going to do another playthrough and we didn't have the space elevator, uh, I would definitely migrate to a smaller planet, um, pretty much as soon as possible, so that it costs very little liquid rocket fuel to take off from the planet. Um, and we, we can do all the productivity bonus, uh, okay, maybe not this small of a planet, or if it had less water, perhaps. Um, but yeah, we can take advantage of all the productivity bonuses on a small moon, launch from there, and do the space things. Are we back home yet? We are back home. Fantastic. Alright, as soon as this is resupplied, I'm going to uh, Pentium to fix this. And then after that, I want to make uh, a couple of space probe rocket silos, one in the asteroid belt and one at the star. Uh, I think I need to check, though, silo, we do have one, space probe rocket silo, I need to check what we're going to have to send there all the time, preferably before I go, it's literally just space probe rockets. Well, that really simplifies the logistics. Um, should we make a shuttle that uses ion to go back and forth, since it's never going to land? We could even, yeah, just in the solar system, we could have a solar-powered ion shuttle, uh, as small as possible, since the volume of stuff that it needs to transport is not that much. Can we even... Can we use a brick shuttle and just give it ion engines? Well, no, these... All of the logistics to supply these things is for liquid rocket fuel. Um, so we'll need to do a new drop-off station for these. But I would like to design this ship. Um, I think I'll use this space to build it right now. Um, so we're going to need some amount of floor. I don't want it to be any bigger than this. We're going to need a ion engine. Flat solar panel or two. 3.7 megawatts and this takes 10.3. We could even... Okay, the asteroid belt solar percentage is 172. Nervous orbit is 466. Uh, for the shuttle that's going to go to the sun and back, we could actually give it enough solar panels um, to go full speed. But for the one that goes to the asteroid belt, um, it's going to have to slow down a bit as it gets further from the sun, but that's 
not that big of a deal. Okay, so we're going to put some ion uh, tanks. I think two is going to be way more than enough for our purposes. This is only going to be going from the asteroid belt back to Nalva's orbit, or from the sun back to Nalva's orbit. Um, so... We need a console. I wonder if that's going to be streamlined. I don't... This would be streamlined easily. Probably. Uh, we only need a couple of laser turrets. And we need some chests. This is actually... We're only going to be dropping off space probes. How do they stack? 50? Oh, they stack to 1. Okay. How many space probe rockets does it take for a launch? Is it 100? What is this fluid wagon doing? What? What? Why? Why is a fluid wagon trying to pick up cold thermofluid from the robot network? What? Huh? Logistic train stop input is connected, apart from the constant combinator, which just has settings. It's only reading the logistic network contents. And somehow it thought this robot network here has a hundred thousand uh, cold thermofluid. Does anyone have the slightest idea how this happened. It's all falling apart? Wait, what? Faster RAM is better, but Hax already has 3200 RAM, but his motherboard does not support that indeed. Low latency is what matters in most cases. It's like playing an online game with high ping. Even with the fastest internet, if your ping is high, then your net speed won't matter, right? Uh, well... You need a bit of both, but it's relatively trivial uh, with modern internet infrastructure to have enough throughput uh, to play a game. And latency does matter a whole lot more if you're doing some kind of um, like real-time skill-based thing. The last stream I saw, you were having some issues that you wanted to sort out. Figured this was a symptom? Uh, no, this is something completely... completely separate and different. Um, I will... I, I suspect I will never have a clue how the robot network apparently reported to LTN that there is cold thermofluid available for pickup here. Actually, what's the name of the station? It's just called... I'm, I'm going to update the name a little bit. Uh, it's probably that the station name is the same as it is somewhere else. And for whatever reason... Either maybe I changed the schedule for this. I can't remember doing that. Um, but I left in the go to the stop or passive provider to pick up fluid. Like, if there's any ambiguity with station names, what LTN does is creates a temporary stop uh, on top of the train station. So the train goes there first and then goes to the nearest station with the appropriate name. 
Um, I have to guess that somehow... Somehow that step was broken. Okay. Uh, so we could fit uh, 48 times 8. Uh, we could fit 384 probes in this thing. Um, ideally... Okay, I've, I've covered this a number of times. Um, but ideally I would like to set requests on these buffer chests. Um, so that it delivers space probes and then takes back, um... Uh, space probe data. But... We can't both read and set... Uh, we can't read contents and set requests for a chest at the same time. Or alternate between them automatically. Um, so we'll probably just have to make one shuttle for each type. So, let's see, 48 times 8, 384, that's almost enough, uh, I believe that's almost enough for four rocket launches, I'm guessing. Does it tell us here? Launching satellites, base probes. It doesn't say that you need a hundred to do that, but it looks exactly like the vanilla rocket launch, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be a hundred. Amazing series, by the way, trying to catch up on YouTube. Shame it starts from part 46. Uh, thank you, and I'm sorry. Yeah, I did not anticipate um, the demand for watching the VODs, um, and I didn't set them up early enough. Okay, I think... Mm, I think I'll just cut down on the solar panels and live with the shuttle not being that fast. It's going to be bottlenecked on resources anyway, with just one shuttle, I'm pretty sure. And we can always add more if that's not the case. I don't think the travel time is going to be much of an issue. Um, so we've got six point... On the other hand, our container stress is going to be way more than our hull stress. I would like to have enough solar panels to at least um, keep this thing running at full power when we're as far out as Narvis. Okay then. Good talk. Um, I'll need some more space up here, or perhaps the sides would make more sense. As long as we can easily fit four of these somewhere. Um... The more narrow we make it, the fewer laser turrets we need, right? Although if we make it too long and have laser turrets only at the front, um, they could the meteors could actually come in by the sides. Uh, I guess some at least one accumulator would make sense, so we can control the speed. I'm gonna, just going to go speed signal. And we need uh, two decider combinators for destinations. Or we could go the route that we did for the shuttles. 
and have that logic on the outside. So literally all we need is anchor numbers on a constant combinator. I think we'll do that. Put this over here, just for the look of it. We will be needing some anchors. Uh, we will also be needing some refueling. If we put this anchor here, we can have this space pipe here. That'll work. Okay, and let's go for some arbitrary symmetry, and also, um, I think this is everything, we just throw in some more chests, we'll actually put this up here, the symmetry of the chests I'll value over the look of the wiring, I suppose. Um, so this is 14 chests. Much more container stress than hull stress. I'm pretty sure it just goes for whichever is... Okay, my guess is that it just goes for whichever is higher when it comes to uh, spaceship speed. Based on the thrust of the engines versus the ship weight, approximated by integrity stress. Um, in terms of being able to launch the ship at all, the only thing that has mattered is whichever is higher. And it does say that explicitly. But I don't know if both of these matter or if it's just the one that's higher. In terms of... Uh, speed. If it is just the one that's higher, then we can make the ship significantly bigger at effectively no cost. Um, but the only reason I would make it bigger is to have more solar panels. If I put more containers in, then that's not, um, that's running away from us. We're going to be looking for, um, I can't actually check, but I'm pretty sure, uh, the data that we get out of this is going to be stack size 50, just like everything else. So we're going to be getting 14 times 48 times 50, 33,600. Um, I think that's enough. Yeah, 33 rocket launches and change before we launch one of these little shuttles to bring it all back. Uh, I think this is going to be sufficient. And we can bring, um, was it 14? 48 times 14... Uh, we can bring 6.72, uh, launches worth of probes. Well, we're always going to be able to take way more, if, if we use the same design, we're, we're always going to be able to take way more data back than, than we can bring probes. Now that I think about it, uh, obviously we, I brought this stuff up before knowing how it was going to work, but apart from the convenience of having a central place to pick up the probes, uh, it probably would have made a lot more sense to send the probes directly um, to where we're going to be consuming them. I 
could still do that. Are we going to be using space probes anywhere else? Uh, we're going to be using them in deep space. Yeah, I think I'll just pick them up from here. Okay. Can I line this up? I can. Let's improve the streamline a little. Oh, it's already streamlined. Even like this. No, it's 90% streamlined. Uh, let's improve upon that. Uh, Sir Carl, Sir Carousel. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Sir Carousel. Sir El Carousel. Oh, there we go. How's your stream today? Sir Icarus the. Th okay, that makes more sense. It looks like an L. <laughs> Was very good. Good to hear. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Good game. Uh, I remember doing surprisingly well clearing out a certain early area in that game. And then for some reason loading a save and then going back and doing it again and finding that it was much, much, much harder than I thought. Um, I was somewhat lucky the first time. But a Zavishan Chevlai. Wait, what? Uh, I can't moderate channels other than English, so I'd have to ask you to refrain from that. First playthrough, very fun and atmospheric. Cool. Why did we get the windows sound just now? Phrases from Stalker, fair enough. Uh, okay. It has been a long time uh, since I played Stalker, and I didn't get that fun either. Alright, so we've got maximum streamline. We could fit a couple more chests here, I suppose. Feels weird putting chests up the front, but that's how they fit. And let's get this thing fueled up. And this will be our our little non-landing shuttle. I guess shuttle is the wrong word, maybe? What monolish voice says? Monolith. From the glowing rock. Uh, yeah, it's been an age since I did play Stalker. So I don't really remember. That's going to be a little bit tacky, having that wire go up there, but what can we do? Alright, so this connects to here. Uh, we also want to know how much um, fuel we have. Actually, I don't think we're going to need to check. We're never going to run out of fuel with this. Always say never. We should have enough for like a hundred trips in these tanks. Okay. Uh... ID do I want? 
Well, let's make a... I think I'll make... Oh, I don't want to... I don't want to offend, uh, offend the sacred space tree, so I won't build a block here. I really want to build a block here. But, no, how about here? Um, let's bring our scaffolding spiders over. Since we've already got, at least for now, cargo rockets bringing up the space probes and the pickup is over here. We'll put it over here so that the train trip is as short as possible. Um, and we'll bring our construction spiders into it. Oh, um, do I need to be here physically right now? I don't think so. I should go fix that issue on Pentium. Uh, give me a spaceship door, please. I might put that here, actually. Why does this part look asymmetrical? Is it just because spaceship floor wasn't here and we made the wall look weird? It'll all change back to the chunky wall later on, but... Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's, um... Pretty sure that's symmetrical. Can we flip this? No, we can't flip it. Okay. Alright then. Uh, that looks fine for a little ship. Where's our scaffolding spiders? Out the way. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna get back. The outposter is still being resupplied, but it's all scaffolding, which. For the moment, I don't care about. Um, so let's go to... Are we refueled? Yeah, we're refueled. Let's go to Pentium. And we'll fix the broken inserters. I should also double check... Um... Here we go. Uh, I want to limit this to maybe even less than a stack. I'll just limit it to one stack, and that should make sure. I need to allow it to have decent throughput, but I want to try and make sure we only send one shot at a time per cannon. But we can't really... I could limit these requester chests to just one delivery cannon capsule. But I think the bots would probably resupply them while the light is still green. I could do a latch circuit for every single resource, for every single signal receiver. I don't particularly want to do that, it's just a lot of combinators. Uh, I think I did figure out at some point a way to do like a multi-latch. I think we've got it here actually. Um, where's our latch? It, it's a bit of a, a, a different latch from usual. Um, let's see. This is the amount of stuff we've got. Each greater than 100k output one each. Uh, each less than 80k output negative a million each. And then each greater than zero output one each memory cell connected to its own input.
Can we adapt that to... I think it would just be each greater than zero. Except we kind of want the opposite. We want to... Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. No, I think, I think I've got it. We want to pulse. Yeah, we want to do this and then just pulse it. We, we, we just add a pulse generator after this bit. So when the condition is met, uh, it'll be each greater than one, and we won't have this one. So that'll just be two combinators and then a pulse generator, I think. Each greater than one, output one each. Each greater than zero, output one connected to its own input, so it'll hold on to that one. Once, even if this one stops transmitting it. And then instead of sending it continuously... We're going to pulse it. Now that I think about it... Um, we're already continuously sending... Once we're asking for a resource. So, I think those extra combinators that I was looking at up here won't be needed. There's just one downside to all of this, which is... If we ask for explosives, and we've run out of explosives in this block, and we send a pulse to say... Oh! No, it's fine. As long as we never run out of delivery cannon capsules, because that's what we're using to control this. So if we've run out of explosives, and we send a pulse saying, please send explosives, we're going to insert a single delivery cannon capsule. And then it's just going to be sitting there waiting for explosives, which we put in unconditionally. Um, could I add some circuitry that would handle if we somehow ran out of delivery cannon capsules as well? I would just have to add... I would have to add a decider combinator to all of these that checks the logistic network for delivery cannon capsules and only passes the pulse through if we have them. Uh, or rather, it would be better to read from the specific chests. Yeah, that's all a bit much. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna put my faith in not running out of delivery cannon capsules. Um, with this circuit. I don't think that's going to happen. We've had no problem whatsoever with... Oh. Well, explosives have been an issue, but we need the delivery cannon capsules to get rid of the explosives. We also kind of um, fixed our explosive supply, hopefully forever. Okay, so what's this going to look like? Where's our construction spiders? Um, also, are we on the way to Pentium? We are. Four minutes. Fantastic. Okay. So, all we need... Uh, it's going to be a little bit awkward squeezing this in in some places. But we need a... Pulse generator, which is just two combinators... Um, one is each greater than... I was going to say each greater than zero, but you could actually set it to, like, not equal to zero. Um, but you could say each greater than zero output each, and then the other one is just everything times negative one, or each times negative one. 
and because of the timing of the signals, uh, you might just be able to see a green wire on the right there. So they both receive an input at the same time. Wires transmit data instantaneously. Combinators take one tick to take an input and then do something with it and spit out an output. So the each greater than zero receives its input. One tick later it outputs whatever input it received. And at the same time, uh, it receives a negative of whatever it was receiving last tick. That, that's on top of the signal that it's receiving. So implicit addition and subtraction happens. Um, whatever we were transmitting on the green wire, we're now transmitting that and also the negative of that, which evens out to zero. Uh, so one tick after the, where's our spiders? One tick after the, uh, each greater than zero starts outputting, it stops. And we're just, I'm pretty sure all we have to do is squeeze that in between our uh, signal receivers and our inserters. The only thing is it would be a big pain to also account for running out of um, delivery pen capsules. Yeah, so here it is with the wiring. Green wire connects both of these inputs. Um, so they both receive something at the same time. Uh, at, let's call it zero ticks, uh, fish is transmitted on this green wire. At one tick, this thing is outputting fish. At one tick, this thing is outputting negative one fish. The negative one goes up here. And that gives us one fish, minus one fish, zero fish. And then at tick number two, we're outputting nothing from this thing. Okay. I think I'm just going to have to put them in here. It's just going to be a little bit awkward. Um, I don't particularly think we need this pulse generator for anything but the ones where we're spamming a lot of explosives. So that's going to go there, and... That's going to go there. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's really quite simple. This goes here. And this goes here. Good morning, Hacks. Hope you're doing well today. Raren, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, are we at our destination yet? Three minutes game time. Um, once we put these inserters back, it's going to consume these resources, I hope. Unless there's something missing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, nine different resources. I'm pretty sure that's everything. And once a resource is missing from this chest, we will output one of that resource. Um, we do that by saying 
each less than or equal to 1, output 1 each, and we have a constant combinator that just has 1 of whatever resource is supposed to be in the chest. Slept in today and still enjoying my morning tea, so everything alright. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, we're just waiting on the ship getting there before we can really test this. I should leave behind some spares as well. If I'd left behind spare inserters, machines, whatever... Um, this wouldn't have been necessary. But on the other hand, if this happened by accident once and we kept repairing it automatically, uh, we probably would have destroyed a bunch of stuff before I found out. Oh, while we're at it, we can put the energy beam receivers... Um, I think I want... This reactor is so big, I'm pretty sure I want four of them. Um, let's look at Deadwood. Which... Uh, where is Deadwood? Deadwood. There we go. Uh, I just threw down one of these here. And it is going to be sufficient for Deadwood, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Uh-oh. I perhaps stand corrected? Well, it's slowing down our production of coal. We've got 10,000 degrees of heat here, but the pipes can only take a thousand. Um, and then we're consuming too much of the heat before we get anywhere else. It's actually looking worse than I expected it to. Uh, I want to go back and put another one of these over here. Obviously it's better if we design a reactor Oh, an array of heat exchangers and steam turbines from scratch that fits around one of these. Um, we can't really fit it in the middle, unfortunately. It's just barely taking up too much... Sp wait. No, I absolutely could have put this in the middle. Um... Yeah, because of the extra space taken up by the inserters. We've even got one tile to spare. Uh, we can fix this remotely. Let's do that. So I'm going to remove all of this. And it's going to be a shame to sacrifice 10,000 degrees of heat, but it's all free anyway. Let's put this here. Um, I'll also take advantage of the heat that we've already got in the nuclear reactors. I don't know how much it's going to work that way, actually. No, it will, because um, this thing's going to be cold when we place it down. Oh, the reactors are down to 500 degrees anyway. Okay. There should... Unfortunately, we can't get rid of that um, landfill. A monument to our mistakes. But the bots should be bringing the heat exchanger back. Let's go to the sun. Retarget this thing. Uh, it won't do anything bad if it's set to energize, uh, even if it's pointed at not a beam receiver. Um, is this connected? I believe it is. 
it is warming up fantastic and we are stealing some heat from the old nuclear reactors cool Well, that should be sufficient to run this thing as well as it ran before, once it heats up. I'm glad we didn't have to go back there to fix this. Um, and this is the same design, so we'll be able to do that here as well. Fantastic. In fact, if we really want to... We could fit a couple of these, but I'm pretty sure it won't make a difference because the amount of heat that heat pipes can hold and how far they have to go is a bit too much here. But it's not how far they have to go, it's how many heat exchanges they need to go past. If I were to somehow run heat pipe out through here, um, we could make some improvements. I guess I could landfill this bit, get rid of these steam turbines. We'd no longer have a perfect ratio, but we're not getting perfect utilization of our perfect ratio as it is. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure for some of the smaller reactors we've got, I looked at it and concluded that we couldn't squeeze in a beam receiver. Um, yeah, this one, we're one tile short from being able to just jam this in here. Um, but for now, this, I'm, I think I'm going to deconstruct all the old nuclear plants. Uh, eventually. And I've actually got a design... Oh, it's dark. I've actually got a design right here. Um, there's... So this is... Uh, 240 heat exchangers to 412 steam turbines. Um, or if we just do a quarter of it, it's 60 to 103. This is, I believe, the smallest uh, reactor that we can make with a perfect ratio for heat exchangers to steam turbines, because we consume a uh, we make 103 steam per second, uh, and these things consume 60. Uh, so this is actually, I don't think lowest common denominator is technically correct, but you get the idea. Well, no, it is. Um, 60 times 103. Uh, 6,180, I think, is the lowest common denominator between those two. Um, so that's our smallest possible perfect ratio. Uh, but yeah, just this times 4 is what we're going to be building here. Uh, in fact, I may as well... I may as well build that now that we've got the... I just want to make absolutely sure. If that's all green, it has to be on target. Yeah, we've got everything on the ground except for the beam receiver. So I may as well start building it. Don't think I need the spiders here at the moment. Cool. Okay. We have arrived. Anchor on Pentium. Wait, did we... I'm pretty sure I checked, but we did fill up on liquid rocket fuel. Yeah. We're not going to have trouble taking off. Why does it have to be this dark? Oh. 
Did I just... Did I just land on water? Is this going to leave landfill behind or something? Um, okay, so that's working. I need to check. Uh, I think I missed my opportunity. I need... I, I want to see this pulse generator working. Um... We're not asking for any resources right now. I actually didn't miss it. So we should see uh, on the inputs for this combinator, even if it's not outputting anything, uh, we should see everything that's being asked for from Pentium. And I'll just double check. I didn't disconnect the... Oh, why do we have all these used up uranium fuel cells? Oh, oh, we need to, we need to circuit control this. Um, if there's no, if there's no used up uranium fuel cells, then and only then. No, we need to put everything else in. Um... Let's make this a filter inserter, and we'll add a arithmetic combinator here, and we'll basically convert uranium fuel cells to... Well, I would need two of them. No, I'll put... I'll put a constant combinator here. We're going to set filters. Uh, whitelist. Uh, so we're going to always put in iron plate. We're going to always put in uranium-235. And sometimes we're going to put in uranium-238. And if there's any used up uranium fuel cells here, um, well, let, let's be specific just to be really clear what we're doing. Uranium fuel cell times negative one output U238. So we're outputting a negative, which is going to cancel out the 238 here. Whenever we send a zero or negative value to a filter inserter or set requests, um, that removes it. So because we have used up uranium fuel cells, we can assume we have um, uranium-238 in here. Another way we could have done this is just add a chest between them, but I just wanted to demonstrate this. Um, as long as we've got used up uranium fuel cells, we're not going to take 238 from here. Of course, I did just do all that um, moments before we're about to replace this with a energy beam receiver. So that may have been of suboptimal intelligence. Uh, let's check if Soma is biter extinct. There's still biters. Where's our energy glaives? One, two, three, four. I thought I was going to be able to... Well, I guess I could borrow a couple of them. How much power are we getting from these gla These two are really strong. Uh, 8 gigawatts each. I don't think we actually need that. Um, the reactor that we built two of here is 2.4 gigawatts, in theory. 
Um, so... If we borrow these weaker ones... Let's set this to energize. Any, um... Target will be... Here. And... Energize Pentium target. What the? No. What? What? Why would you do this? Okay. Uh, energize Pentium target will be here. And we're sending significantly more than enough power to run these nuclear reactors. Okay. So we're going to remove... How big is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 5. It's 13 by 13 that we need. So it's going to be like this. Energy beam a receiver. Same thing over here. Uh, I want that to be consistent. Alright, uh, we're not going to need any more nuclear fuel. Pretty cool. That also means we're not paying explosives and iridium plate and energy on Nalvis um, to resupply this thing. And there it is. Let's borrow the heat that we've already got from the extant reactors. Well, this is a nice little bonus. I didn't even consider that I would be upgrading this already to use the energy beam receivers. What was the output of the arithmetic combinator? The arithmetic combinator is taking used up uranium fuel cells, multiplying by negative one, and outputting it as a different signal, U-238. Uh, so if there are any used up uranium fuel cells, we're going to remove the filter of the 238 from this thing. Um, but it's all academic at this point because we're getting rid of our nuclear, nuclear fuel use over here. But uh, nothing wrong with academic. Academic will prepare us for something in the future. Fantastic. Okay, I might, um, I might take all the nuclear fuel back with me. Oh, and let's stop requesting uranium.
uranium fuel cell. Uh, used up. I don't actually have something to recycle these in orbit. Whatever. Uh, we will not be taking those from buffer chests because we need that to run our ship. Fantastic. Already at 300 degrees. Alright, once the bots calm down, we'll leave. And what were we doing in orbit again? That's right, we want to make... We want to make some drop-off station for, for this ship. Uh, so for now... For now, I think I'll copy-paste this here, just so we know where this is going to fit. Just enough room for the pipes. We could fit more of them, but it's not really necessary. Because they'll instantly swap places if there's one queuing to drop stuff off here. Uh, so we need a pickup station. How did I do it over here? Oh, that's fuel only. That's fluid only. Solid, 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 solid fuel on the sides. I could probably mostly copy this design, actually. Yeah, I think I will do that. So let's start with the output stations down the bottom. Output stations are the top. Uh, it won't be liquid rocket fuel that we want delivered here. But we can mostly use this. I do want to use the same bot system. What the? We're going to be requesting iron. Iron stream, that is. Let's add some pumps. I'll make my final decision about exactly where this is going to fit a bit later. Let's connect these. Uh, we need a requester station. And 
we're looking... What the... Okay, the bots are... The bots have finished what they're doing. Oh, we just shut down a lot of medias. Heat is at 653 degrees. Fantastic. I wonder if being able to go beyond... No, I don't think it's going to matter. We can go beyond 1000 degrees on this, but not on the heat pipe. I don't think this one's going to run perfectly, unless we've got a surplus of power. Uh, a significant surplus of power. But yeah, I am glad the new nuclear plant has room to upgrade to the energy beam receiver, at least. Let's head back to Nalvis Orbit. Actually, I think we have the probe silos here, don't we? Oh, I had them in this chest, which I got rid of because I wanted to because I wanted to reduce the hull stress, and then they probably auto trashed and took them away. Rip. Uh, let's go for a couple of space probe silos. on my person. And we'll go back to... Now... What? No, what just happened? No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Player. Apply changes. Oh, the calamity. Um... Yeah. Give it all back, please. No. Stop. Why is there a spider in here? No, give my spider back. How dare you? Oh. Oh, and we've got a space probe rocket silo. This is where it ended up. Wait, how do we have one here and not two? Bots in here stealing your shit, indeed. Silo. Space probe rocket silo. I'm just going to set that from... Well, okay, first I'm going to set it to like ten. Make sure we get them all. Um, I don't know how we ended up with just one here, as opposed to two. Um, but yeah, I'm going to set that to zero to infinity. Um, I'll be taking all of this back, I think. Okay. Alright, I see how it is. Uh, let's just go back to Nalvis. Wait, no, no, no. Not Nalvis Orbit. I want to go to... Calidus Asteroid Belt 1. That's a nice big free space right there. Uh, so we're going to build our first probe silo here. Calidus Asteroid Belt 1. Launch is disabled. Requires fuel and booster to what? what? Checking console passed. Okay, we're good. What? Launch energy. 783 out of 1012. Uh-oh. Oh, I think I see the problem. Um, we had fewer chests on this ship when we came here last time. Um, <laughs> alright, we need to... That's a lot of stuff we've got stored. Hmm... I hate to say it, but I might have to abandon some of this stuff, so that we can take off. 
783 gigajoules out of 1,012. Uh, container stress is like 50% more than it used to be. Landfill? Yeah, that seems like a good choice, actually. Um, why don't we just mark the pure landfill chests for deconstruction? And we'll see how much difference that makes for starters. Not that landfill isn't sort of expensive. It takes a lot to get enough of it when we need it, unless we have copious amounts in storage. We're definitely not leaving scaffolding here. Um, the resupply system seems to be working. I didn't actually... Oh, it's doing no input signals right now. Uh, no output signals. I didn't actually get to see this pulse earlier. Yep, there it is. See, the inserter was... was uh, already... The, the light was already red, even though it was picking something up here. If it was taking from a belt, a pulse would not be sufficient uh, to make the inserter pick something up. So that's going to send exactly one stack of ingots when ingots begin to be requested. Uh, and exactly four stacks of explosives. So I think... Uh, let's see how much space we've got in our chest. That's great, actually. I think we can now reliably order extra explosives. And we should never get this filled over four stacks of explosives. And... There they are. And we, if we look back at Nalvis, we should not see um, explosive recipes. Ex delivery can encapsulate explosive recipes being made. Nice. Okay. Um, again, the only downside with this design is if we run out of delivery cannon capsules, um, the system's going to get jammed, confused depending on how you want to look at it. Of course, it would be a very easy fix. I could simply switch this signal on and off, uh, off and on, and then it'll send a pulse through on the other end again. All right, how's our ship integrity looking? Can we take off? Oof. So that was what, three chests? We need like three or four more to be removed. Uh, that's... How much inventory space do I have? Not a whole lot. Um... Tell you what, what should I leave behind? Oh, we've got a couple of storage chests with hardly anything in them. Okay, how much difference does that make? A decent amount. We need two or three chests more to be removed. And it doesn't matter if the chests are actually empty or not. It just assumes they're all full for the purpose of this calculation. Do I have a chest that's nearly empty that I can... No. 
No, I do not. Uh, sacrifices must be made. I could have a space truck come and pick this stuff up later, I guess. It's a terrible waste of rocket fuel or a terrible waste of other resources. This sucks. I wish I could switch off the bots taking things from trash slots. Like when I uncheck this. Then I could take advantage of um, 40 inventory spaces. That's like almost a whole chest. Alright, I guess we'll leave behind the uh, used up uranium fuel cells. And... We're not requesting uranium here anymore. Why don't I make this a purple chest and we'll get rid of all the um, used up fuel cells and uranium and stuff. And we can come pick this stuff up later. Let's make sure we've got plenty of storage. Uh, so that leaves us at... 6.30 becomes 6.06, and I think we have to get down to about... I didn't see the difference in launch energy. 7.83 gigajoules. One more chest puts us at... Sorry, it's 8.18 to 8.50. Uh, 7.32... Wait, what? Oh. 32. That doesn't sound right. Oh, I'm looking at launch energy, not container stress. So if we're gaining 32 each time, I think we need to remove two more chests. 754. 786. It's going to be just barely too much to take off if I only remove one more chest. Well, we've got tons of uranium fuel cells everywhere. This is, um, this is one of our cheapest resources at the moment, as weird as that sounds. And it's only going to become more so as we keep replacing, um, nuclear with energy beam receivers. This thing is creeping towards 500 degrees. Uh, I wonder if it would make any difference if I add more heat pipe over here? We're over a thousand and this is at 992, so maybe? Can't really fit it there though. Uh, we can't squeeze around the pipe. Okay. And let's just confirm we still can't take off. 783 out of 786, just as we calculated. Okay. Um, what are we going to leave behind? I think we could just get rid of one of these chests for now, to be honest. In fact, I could have done that sooner. It's fine. I could even save a little bit more rocket fuel by getting rid of one more of these chests. We 
we're going to leave all of this stuff here to be processed anyway. Uh, I could even send it back as U-238. But I'm not too worried about that. I mean by cannon I could do that, but not by fuel cell. Uh, not as a fuel cell. Take the rest of it from me. How dare you. Okay. Um, I think we'll wait for the bots to calm down a little bit. We've got enough. Let's go to the asteroid belt. I'll make absolutely sure I've got that silo. Oh, I do have two of them. Fantastic. We're off to Calidus Asteroid Belt 1. And we're left with almost no liquid rocket fuel. Fantastic. Oh, that forced an integrity check. Whoops. Um, I'll put those back later. Alright, I am going to take a short break. I'll leave you with uh, Elkian Screensaver. And be back in a few minutes.
Is LTN screensaver okay? Uh... Uh... Did I not switch it on or something? I think I must have, otherwise... I don't have another hotkey or I don't know what it is to... remove all of this HUD stuff. Okay, where are we? 45 seconds from the asteroid belt, perfect. Deadwood 2 is coming in. How has our coal situation been? Uh, we've got... Most of these machines are going. Wait, why is this machine not working? Uh-oh. What? Oh, you're joking. How did that happen? Well, that's, uh, eight more machines that will be doing all core fragment processing. Uh, current capacity is 87.5 coal per second, 90 core fragments. Uh, Deadwood... Whoops. Oh, this is Deadwood. And the reactor's looking good. Fantastic. Uh, Deadwood should be giving us about 88 per second. So the only question is, do we bottleneck on the spaceships? Hey, Revan. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, zero seconds at current speed. Fantastic. Let's anchor. Um, I imagine we're not going to need a whole lot of uh, space here. So we're going to place down a space probe rocket silo. How much power do you need? 4 megawatts. That's like practically nothing here. Uh, so let's put down some solar panels. Put this thing over here actually. Should be more than enough. Actually, I can disconnect this and make sure. It's not consuming anything right now? That doesn't seem right. Minimum consumption. 8.3 kilowatts. Why does it say zero watts? Well, anyway, we've got 12.4 megawatts of uh, production here. We can't prod this. Uh, we can make it go fast. That would be... 36 megawatts. Uh, sure, why not? It's that easy to build this out. Do we not have bots? Uh, how do we have no construction bots in this thing? I don't think we need that second radar pylon. Okay. Um, auto launch with cargo. Absolutely. And we need uh, we need to build a pickup slash drop off station here, but I don't know if I brought spaceship clamps and so on. We've got five clamps. Okay, cool. 
I'm pretty sure spaceship clamps are the only spaceship specific thing we need here. To build this thing. Um, let's have a look at our system that we're building here for these new shuttles. Um, I'll leave room for expansion, but we probably... Let's see, we're going to have space probes. I think I'll make this both the pickup and the drop-off. Um, we'll do the space probes up the top here. So that's going to be a drop-off. Uh, let's do a long train, why not? I could just make those, like, passive providers. The repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So this is going to be... Space Probe. Uh, space Probe Rocket Requester. Twenty-four or forty-eight chests per station. Uh, Sixteen chests for a ship. I think I will just add more storage right here. And some stack filters. Connect that here, actually. Looks a little bit better. Uh, is it down here? Space probe rocket. Uh, wait, how do I... I thought... If I flipped and or rotated this, I could make it line up with that but it doesn't seem to work that way. It's fine. Okay. Uh, let's go with... How many space probes can we fit here? Well, we can fit 14.4 train loads. So let's go for like 12. Uh, stack size of 1. So, 160 times 12, let's call it 1900, space probe rocket, Saxon Spooner, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well, and... I could put the same thing over here, that seems like potentially overkill. Uh, I'm going to want the spaceship to be as close... Oh. I kind of removed my reference point there. Uh, as close to this thing as possible. Might be the least convenient place to put the piping. I could move this, I guess. Oh, I want a pump here as well. So let's make that a fiver. And five, six, seven, eight, the worst number. Um, for these pipes. So spaceships are just big cargo ships now? Uh, kinda. 
16 times 48. That is 768. Oh, it's the same as the brick shuttles. 768. That's like one and a half and then some times the size of a uh, cargo rocket. And we don't deal with any of the hassle. Except for the fact that it uses way more liquid rocket fuel to get off planet for some reason. To the point where I'm seriously considering going back to cargo rockets to get things from Nalvis to orbit. Um, unfortunately. I've been trying to simply brute force uh, rocket fuel production. I don't know if it's enough. If we obviously keep the uh, keep the liquid rocket fuel going into the interstellar ships. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, where were we? Now this orbit, and I. This will do for... What ID should we give this? What number were we up to with our shuttles? 119... Uh, 115... 3000... So we're using a different starting point for those ones. Oh, I think it'll be easier if I look over here. 122, 123. Uh, oh, that's also testing packs? Wait, why is this one not taking off? Testing pack greater than or equal to... Huh? How many testing packs do we have here? 7.6k. Is one of these missing, like, one testing pack? No. Is the wire all connected? It looks like it is. Oh, there's like eight. There's two testing packs missing from this thing. Wait, really? Do we have bots here? We do. Okay, this is the second time out of many, 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 many spaceship launches that we've seen this problem. Uh, apparently, I guess because of robot stack size or something, um, they're not filling this chest. Because they can deliver four testing packs at a time, I think. Yeah. What? That's just rude. I seriously might have to go through all my spaceships and set them to, like, instead of uh, core fragment equals 48,000, it's going to have to be, like, core fragment e is greater than or equal to 47,997. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Anyway. Uh, this is a distraction. We were checking out what number we're up to. Okay, so I think 122 was the last one. I should really have a list of these somewhere. Oh, that's 123. I'm scared. Let's start at a different set of numbers. Uh, how about... We've already done two and three thousand. Can we do a negative? 
I, I doubt it. I don't know. Yeah, we can do a negative. Okay. Uh, I might consider that. Negative one will be for space probes. Clamp. Using right. Go to left. Unless it just ignores negatives. But I don't really see why it would. Especially if it doesn't. If you try to set this to the wrong signal type, it automatically changes it back. Um, if it's going to be that sort of aggressive with how we set our signals on the clamps, I would imagine if it lets us put a negative here, it's going to let us use a negative. Uh, so this is going to be Space Rocket Probe. And that actually needs to go over here. I need to get rid of that floor. Um, and that means... Oh, I can do it this way. Or can I? I don't think the bots are going to remove that floor until... The clamp is removed. No, they are. Nice. Hi, I have a question about spaceships. Can you launch from a planet without rocket fuel? Just use ion engines. Uh, no, you cannot. They just don't have enough thrust. Uh, heat... HP Crusher, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Okay, so we're going to be requesting 48 space probes in each of these chests. Um... I think I can just remove this now. And... Uh, just to save the scaffolding, which is going to get deleted anyway. Pick that up. And then we're going to... Novus Orbit. We've already got the signal... The clamp signals here. So the moment I launch this, it should go to our block over here. Or perhaps not. Penguin. How do you have no... Oh, you're kidding. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot to put power poles. Oh, <laughs> where are we? Uh, we're a we're a minute out from Navis orbit. Um, I could send the outpost uh, automatically uh, by remote control, except this is the outposter. Um, how about... Uh, how about we put a roboport on this thing? Rescue mission, indeed. Um, I know we're never going to need the nuclear reactor for this thing, uh, after joyriding it around a bit. It's astonishing how far, how long the heat lasts once we leave. So let's put in a, a robot port. We'll request some pylon things. Apparently we only have pylon substations. Um, I could... I, I think I might want to use the little baby power poles this time. 
because we've left absolutely no space um, otherwise. Or I could remove some of the chests and put in a pylon substation. I don't particularly want to remove the chests. Let's do... Let's do some little miniature power poles. I wish I could snap them to a grid, though. Right about here. And we can clean up some of that wire spaghetti when the time comes. Okay. Uh, we need to request... Small babby power poles. Where are they? Where's our request here for pylons? Or do we not have them? I wonder how... Oh, we just happen to have two pylon substations here. Okay, I see how it is. Uh, let's go for... A stack of each of these. The pylon and pylon substation looks too similar. And we should have a train bringing those items quite soon. Actually... No, I was going to say this thing should be able to crawl back to its destination, but... Oh. Oh, I can actually manually anchor it. Okay. Uh, no rescue mission needed, apparently. I think it was here. Fantastic. Okay. And we still don't have those little baby power poles, though. I'm very tempted to just put in a substation instead. It's gonna look a lot less tacky. Let's, let's just do it. I'm having trouble removing them. I might have to go to... Ghost Deconstruction Planner. And we'll throw in a pylon substation. What was the power poles we used for the brick shuttles? Uh, it is a substation. Okay. No, I should have swapped out the accumulator, actually. Put a pylon substation there. We really don't need two accumulators for this thing. We just need the one so that we know how fast we can go safely. And let's remove those ghosts. Cool, I like this more. Um, why are we not getting space probe rockets delivered here? Space probe rocket. Uh, provide stack threshold, 168. We've got 7 times 24 stacks. 168. 7, 7, 7... And seven. Uh, it's not the signaling, because there would be a train trying to come here if that was the problem. Uh, maybe it's the requester station that's not set up. 
Oh. Yeah, well, there's your problem. Uh, okay. It's actually, I actually set it up like it's a provider. Did you just get a ghost from the item recipe? Ghost from the item recipe? Uh, for the deconstruction planner, do you mean? There's, uh, special signals under unsorted. You can go entity ghost, item on ground, item request slot, tile ghost, and a whole bunch of asteroids if you're playing space exploration. Um... Okay, so this is requesting... Whoa. Speaking of unsorted... Glyphs, you say? Cartouche. That's a hint. Artifact fragment. Interburbulator. What the heck is an interburbulator? Artifact jury rig. Hmm. These glyphs are... Uh, we've seen these at the, um... We've seen these at the pyramids. Okay, let's not get too distracted just yet. Um... What were we doing? Space probe rocket. And this needs to be a request threshold. Spooky, indeed. Alright, so it does help if you make a request a station. Um, we're also going to need some rubber pots. Uh, I think I want to copy this part, if we haven't already, except the whitelist is going to be a bit different, and I want, uh, I should have measured this first. I kind of want to put that here. It's a bit late for that. I could change it after the ship leaves. It's fine. Really, I just want this as close as possible to... We don't need this side. For the pipe. We technically don't need this side for the clamp either. Um, but yeah, the main thing is I want a supercharger close to here, but without imposing on the next block over. Um, so this one will probably go here. Dragon Knight Hitsune, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Black Dog Daniel Templar Warden, welcome, welcome. Good to see some of you again. Hope you're doing well also. Um, Where exactly is this other copy of this ship going to fit? I think here is good. And Excel, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Okay, so we want uh, probes. Probes are permitted in this block. Uh, we need the logic on the, I was going to say land side, that's not quite right. 
Uh, we want to transmit... Oh, we're already doing it. The amount of... Uh, spaceship rocket probes we have. We need a decider combinator. I'll do it in the middle, I think. And actually, I might face it like this this time. Put a constant combinator here. And we're, go we're going to send a signal for asteroid belt. What number are we at? Asteroid belt 324. Uh, wrong one. Asteroid belt 324. And launch signal. And we're going to pass that through if we have... If we're full of space rocket probes. So 16 chests times 48. Uh, 768. The stack size is 1, so I don't have to worry about that problem we ran into before. Um, 768. 768. Okay. Uh, one space rocket probe is equal to 768 in these chests. We're going to pass through everything which is going to include the stuff on this constant combinator, uh, which is asteroid belt 324 is our destination, spaceship launch signal, and we're going to send that on the red wire. Our probes are here already, actually. No path. You're bringing bots. We just need a roundabout up here. And this one down here is going to be... Let's say signal negative 2. Remove some scaffolding. Uh, copy paste this one. We're going to build another copy of this ship over here. Uh, where we've got everything we need to automatically build a ship. Apparently we're missing spaceship floor. Um, why are we missing spaceship? We've got 1.5k. Oh, the copy-paste didn't include it. Okay. Uh, I need to make a blueprint. There we go. And as soon as the floor is placed, we need to place the blueprint again. Once it's fueled up... This is going to be negative 2. Negative two. And we're going for asteroid belt probe data is what this shuttle is for. Uh, stack size is indeed 50. So we're looking for 2400 in each chest.
and then... Is that already full? That was surprisingly fast. Okay, so you do have a pylon substation. Uh, if I set the destination to Nalvis Orbit, it should clamp here pretty much immediately. Uh, it's already set to Nalvis Orbit. Integrity check. Looking good. Launch. Fantastic. It might need a helping hand. Oh, it doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't have a destination signal. Uh, Nervous Orbit is Orbit 317, I think. Yep, there we go. Remove that. And put some scaffolding back here for the look of it. Okay. Uh, so this one is going to be... Let's see. If we're full of probes, output... Everything input channel. Oh, it's already going. Launch in progress. I forgot to give it a name first. And this one is going to be uh, very similar but different. Uh, instead of... Well, no, this is going to um, the same asteroid belt. Spiders, hello. Oh, they're up here. Uh, this will be going to the same asteroid belt, but uh, it'll be picking up instead. So we're going to say if... Uh, Asteroid belt probe data equals zero. I'll put everything input count and the destination is the same. Uh, here we are going to be requesting. All of that. Then we just need to connect the wires. And it should take off immediately. Fantastic. I forgot the part where we refuel these. Uh, 100k... Ion stream. Nice, thank you. And we need the same thing down here. And 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we should see Ion Stream being delivered quite soon. Uh, parking and what was the other one? Penguin. So Penguin is Space Probe... Space Probe Rocket. Space Probe Rocket. Do we call it a shuttle? A shuttle can go to and from the planet, right? This is more like, um... Just a small transport. 
I'm just going to call it Space Probe Rocket Pun. And... Uh, marking. Asteroid Belt Probe Data. I don't know if we're going to need two of these ever, but I'll call it one so it's clear what... that it's one of... Uh, one of our haulers. Feels weird using just solar for an ion engine, but it makes perfect sense uh, in the solar system. Since we're only going between orbit and asteroid belt or the sun. So next is... I want the exact same thing over here. We're going to have another of that ship, except it's going to, because we're doing the logic on the outside, it's going to have a different spot that it lands. And we're going to send that one to the sun. And we'll need one to pick up data from the sun as well. But for now, I don't need to stress about it too much. I'll just put this clearly out of alignment. Um, so it's obvious it's not finished. Okay. So that'll be all of our probes dumped into this block. Now we need to set up the receiving end. We're not going to be... Um, uh, I can make the spaceships land on the... Um, this, actually, if I want to. They don't have to land anywhere in particular. I want them to land nice and close to our uh, rocket silo. We're going to need a robocot and some logistic bots. Uh, I kind of want to make sure I leave 50 logistic bots behind. We're not going to bother resupplying the bots. Um, actually, do we ever get bots stuck in the shuttles? I might have to put, hmm, I might have to put a little uh, circuit to make sure the bots have stopped moving before the ship launches. Or just wait a few seconds or something. Alright, so this is negative one, this is negative two. Okay. Once I put the clamp down with the correct uh, ID, the ship is going to land immediately. We're going to have requester chests here. Uh, how's that ship going to fit? I could even do a couple of rows of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite fit them all. I 
I could just put this down a time. That would probably make sense. So that is 8. That is 16. And we can unload the entire ship of probes. Request from buffer chests. Okay, so there's an and there's an entire ship of storage here uh, for probes. Um, that should be sufficient, even if we're going super maximum throughput here. One day, we can just have another ship waiting in orbit to replace this one. Uh, I'll just double check that. The ship can fit. It, it can. That's actually perfect. Minimum possible distance that the ship will have to cover. And I'll put uh, superchargers on either side of that. Uh, I kind of, looking at it now, want the ship... Uh, the pickup to land on the other side. So we'll move these solar panels. What happened to our power? 645 megawatts out of 2 gigawatts? Oh, it's because the uh, superchargers are still charging. Yeah, so now we're at... Now we're looking much better. Uh, some accumulators might be a good idea. Um, to deal with that. Just for the little instantaneous blip of massive energy consumption. Uh, that's going to occur whenever a bot recharges from here. Okay. So, if this ship goes here, or here... The ship can anchor here, right? Oh, is it already waiting? Nice, we can check. Asteroid Belt Pro Data 1. Anchor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it can anchor here anyway at once. Let's make sure. And then launch. Oh. That means we can this clamp over here or here. That's actually really good. Um, and we're just going to have passive providers. Or maybe these should just be uh, regular steel chests. That probably makes more sense. Oh, also, uh, stack inserters make no sense for probes because the stack size is one. We don't actually have any steel chests here. Um, so let's just cancel that one. It's fine. Yeah, that make, makes, like, no difference. Alright, so our ship is going to... That's unfortunate. Uh, why was this one able to fit snugly? Because this thing is an odd number of tiles long. Okay. Hmm. 
it's the output that's going to be far more high volume for the bots to deal with. So, I'm thinking we swap these around. We're going to have the input on the right side, output on the left. Output ship goes here. Input ship can go here. And this goes here. Okay. Uh, let's go with negative one. Um, I thought that would have our ship landing. Asteroid belt probe data. I'm looking for probe space probe rocket. Calidus asteroid belt one. Destination is already set correctly, otherwise it wouldn't be here. Anchor using spaceship right. Anchor two to. Oh, I need to swap this around for once. Um. So anchor two is going to be left. Anchor using is going to be right. Uh, is going to be left rather. Hold on, I'm confusing myself. Right to left. Okay, cool. Anchor using. Uh, thank you, thank you. Perfect. And logistic bot scoper. We want to make sure we leave 50 behind. Uh, the magic number that doesn't get affected by bot interference wind. They are unloading that pretty quickly. Not too surprising. And then we need to put some logic here. Uh, it's going to be another under condition pass through everything with a constant combinator. That's a little bit in the way. I kind of like having the um, lamps on the opposite side, if only so we can see where the spaceship lands. Uh, one, two, three, four. I think we had five clamps when we got here. Oh, wow. Uh, we don't have a satellite, though. Wait. Is that not how this works? Um, asteroid belt probe. Yeah, we need to actually make the Asteroid Belt Probe. I believe we already automated the Star Probe. Oh, that looks cool. I imagined this uh, icon right here was representing something much smaller. Uh, but this monstrosity is actually it. Uh, so we've got... Zero uh, star probes, actually. We have delivered 609 blank data cards. Oddly specific. Do we have any blank data cards here? We do not. Um, and we are requesting... Oh. Oh, that's right. I was going to add it to this combinator right here, because we'd only incidentally had some blank data cards in this place. Blank data card, 8,000.
It's a thousand data cards per lot, indeed. Uh, so this is just my lazy way to take the blank data cards from a long train pickup and then put it somewhere where we can do a short train pickup. It's also going to be a short trip from here to here. Um, so we should be able to just copy-paste this and change the inputs in order to do a... Uh, a different type of row, unless it needs fluid, which I doubt. Let's make sure we turn this off for now. Uh, so we need a asteroid belt probe. So the blank data cards is staying the same. Uh, solid rocket fuel and rocket control unit also saying, staying the same. We need tier 1 flat solar panels instead of tier 2, which I think currently... Like, I actually have a system here for using the auto crafter to turn all of our flat solar panels into from tier 1 to tier 2, um, but we obviously don't want to do that anymore. I need to rescue flat solar panels from here, so what the heck? Cargo rockets? How did... How did a cargo rocket get here, of all places? Oh. I guess it was just barely out of range of the roboports to clean this up. That's why we don't see as much debris as we'd normally expect. Yeah, this is why I was trying to port everything over to using um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, shuttles instead, spaceships. Uh, what I might do, perhaps, is bring... Construction pylons have an, a supply area, right? Yeah, just a little baby one. So if I put this right about here, and over here as well, let's get rid of the crashed ship stuff. And then I'll just swap this one out. This is my super lazy way to get a trickle of flat solar panels that we need. Um, I'm just gonna add. Oh, I think we need a. F we do not need a filter inserter for this one. And this can go here. Um, that doesn't work the way I had in mind with the tiny little supply area for the robot network. Uh, key CZ, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, in that case, um, does that mean for actually extending the logistics? No, it's a supercharger. Has the most reach for extending the log logistic network. I can't really put it here, though. Oh. This will work. It's not going to connect down here, is it? No, we're good. Um, I'm just going to put this one 
in here. Just played a bit in sandbox. You only need the spaceship rocket booster tank filled with fuel to launch from a planet with ion engines, indeed. As weird as it sounds, um, it does actually mention that in the help somewhere. VTOL. You also need a spaceship rocket booster tank and a spaceship rocket engine. That part's a lie. The booster tank is what stores the fuel you need to get into space and provides the VTOL component. For some reason. Uh, I don't understand why we're not building... Oh. Wait, what? Oh, that's not a radar construction pylon. Well, there's your problem. Uh, I don't think still that I could have put this here. Well, let's find out, actually. I, I, I wanted to see if my initial idea would have worked. Let's remove that. And this goes here. And this goes here. It is actually in the robot network. Even though the supply areas don't touch. Okay, so flat solar panels should now be available for pickup from this station. And it'll just take a moment for the bots to fly them over, but I don't care. Uh, we probably don't need more than a few stacks available at any given time. Considering we only need 10 for a satellite. Okay, so are the ratios all the same? Aeroframe bulkhead 50 as opposed to holmium solenoid. Good. Fantastic. That should actually be a filter, a stack filter. Um, 10, 20, 100, 50, 10, 1,000. 10, 20, 100, 50, 10, 1,000. Okay, cool. Uh, so this needs to be tier 1 flat solar panel. Uh, we don't need heat shielding. Oh. Oh, I misread that. Yeah, instead of heat shielding, it's uranium fuel cell, and it's only 10. Interesting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, fantastic. Um, so we only need, like, 50 uranium fuel cells. We'll keep the 80 rocket control units, solid rocket fuel, um, negative 200 becomes uh, aeroframe bulkhead, negative 80 becomes tier 1 flat solar panel, blank data card stays the same, station name becomes asteroid belt satellite probe, and uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, I want to make an adjustment to our ship. Uh, this one. And because the stack size for all of these things is 1, we're not even going to have to worry about the bots getting it wrong. So currently we've got 16 times 48 stacks. Is 748 if I recall? 768. That is 7.6 um, rockets. 
I didn't even get to see this working, it was so fast, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be... Well, actually, we've got three here. Um, these are all full. And we're missing one, two, three... Uh, I'm confused. We brought 748. Ah, I can't get out. Okay. I just want to read what's in the logistic network. What are you doing? How dare you? Space Rocket Probe, 761. Wait, really? You're joking. 761. Uh... One, two, three, four. Wait. It only takes one space probe rocket. That is what I was getting at, and I'm very pleasantly surprised by. But we brought 768. There's three, four in here. And we've got 761 remaining. What? Hold on. No, it was, yeah, it was 768, wasn't it? 16 times 48. So what happened to, like, three or four of these? Uh, I'm very confused. Anyway, uh, if that's the case, we should actually be bringing these... Is it a one-to-one -one ratio? It says... One space probe rocket. Hey, hey, El Pancho. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, in that case, um, eight of these chests are going to be satellites. Uh, not navigation satellite. Right. Asteroid belt. Robe. Okay. 48. Well, obviously one trip from these little shuttles is going to last a long time. Uh, I want to change this to... Asteroid belt probe. Yeah, I was actually thinking I would have to have another ship to supply. Well, no, I, I was thinking it's going to use a hundred uh, of these for a launch, so we're going to fit like 600 of these and six. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, six satellite probes. But apparently we're just going to provide them in a one-to-one -one ratio. Asteroid belt probe. Okay, so we're going to half this. Um, let's say 900 each. Asteroid? Asteroid. Uh, and this one is going to be a little bit different. Star probe. We need to pick this stuff up, get it back in circulation. Star probe. And 
fantastic. Let's get our construction spiders back to the mall until they get sorted out. Uh, 48 of these. I think we already did this. Uh, 8 chests for those. And 8 chests for those. And... Uh, I guess... I need to pick this stuff up. Oh, what? No. I didn't mean to do that. I hope it didn't, like, destroy a probe or something. I guess it's not that big of a deal. And we're going to be requesting... Asteroid Belt Probe. 28 from Requester Chest. Uh, from buffer chests, rather. How did these get here if I didn't request them from buffer chests? Oh, I think I changed them to a different type of chest because I wanted to check what was in the logistic network. Okay. That should be fine. already set this to negative one. And there it goes again. Okay, so we're going to put our logic... I should move that door. Put our logic over here. Red wire this way. What the? No, that's uh, that's a different part of the clamp. What is that part of the clamp for? Clamps are. To cause a spaceship to land, must be given anchor signals, and so on. To set the ID of a clamp. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's probably it. This, this probably sets the ID of the clamp. Uh, anyway, I think we want to... Hmm. We'll do a if anything equals negative one. So we can check if we've run out of either resource. Output everything. The everything that we're going to output is... Go to Navis Orbit, Spaceship Launch, Planet Orbit 317, and we're also going to send a signal of negative uh, 1 for Space Probe Rocket, and negative 1 for uh, Asteroid Belt Probe. Because we can't check if, like, everything equals zero. Or anything equals zero. So this way, when we actually have zero asteroid belt probes, the signal is going to be negative one. Same goes for space probe rocket. Uh, I want to check real quick. If I set this to... Anchor using spaceship left clamp. 17. 
I don't know what this circuit wire connection is for. Hmm. Oh well, that's fine. Yeah, so we're reading from the chests. Input signals 375 of this. If anything equals negative 1, output everything input count. That's going to include go back to Nalva's orbit. And uh, I think we're good. Let's see if that is working. Uh, hello? Oh, I see. We need to connect that to the console. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, next is negative two. And just for the sake of symmetry, that's going to go there. Even though I would rather put the logic on this side. And this one is just going to be 2.4k times 16 times 48. Wait, no, that's not right. Uh, 38,400. If asteroid belt probe data is greater than or equal to 38,397, that way we won't get the very rare bots don't feel like putting in the last three, uh, two or three items and then the spaceship never takes off issue. Um, we need to read from the green wire, we need to, we don't need these negative signals, not that they would make a difference, we need to write to the console, and this one isn't going anywhere until, I'm surprised how much ion stream that's used. I know I did get it to take off again earlier, but still. Uh, how is Space Pro rocket doing? Off. Okay, that should be fine. Remains to be seen if we'll ever lose some of our logistic bots in this place. What are you doing? Okay, thank you, but no thank you. Uh, I want exactly one stack of logistic bots to be left over here. Do we ever get meteors landing here? I hope not. That would be a little bit of a nuisance. Okay, it's going to be a while before we can test and confirm all this is working. But I definitely don't mind this neat little setup. In fact, I think I'll copy it for the sun. Um, let's blueprint this. Uh, obviously the solar panels can go wherever. I'll get rid of the spaceship. Uh, don't include the spaceship floor tiles. Actually, that might help. Don't need any green chests. Uh... 
And we're obviously going to want to change the IDs when we get there. Alright, I'm just going to keep that in my inventory for the moment. Now let's see if we can find somewhere on Helidus Orbit that we can fit all of that. Actually... Can I... no. I'll put it in Game Blueprints so it's very easy to find. Helidus... Uh, we don't quite have enough room here without using scaffolding. I could put it over here. If we want to be that cheap. Oh! Oh! Oh no. Uh, we do need to protect from asteroids in these places. I shouldn't be surprised by this. Okay. That's going to be fun. Setting up another supply chain. I could... Hmm. I could do what I've been doing with the space trucks and include, like, ammo brought in these, but that depends on a consistent throughput of all of this other stuff. Especially since we don't have to go far. I think I'll just set up a dedicated supply line. I could even do the equivalent of what I've done on our, plan our interplanetary outposts. Where we make batteries on the spot. Except we would need... Um, uh, where is it? Big spider like uh, spidery thing. Uh, we would need a couple of these just to empty the fuel, uh, empty the barrels, and make the batteries. I think it's going to be a lot cleaner just to make some more ion shuttles. I keep calling them shuttles, I can't quite help it. Okay, let's head over to Calidus. Calidus Orbit. Go. And so long, Calidus Asteroid Belt. We did, in fact, leave some bots. Um, I wonder if... Okay, so we're going to have this one going to the asteroid belt, this one going to the sun, this one picking up from the asteroid belt, this one picking up from the sun. But I think we could easily fit... We could easily fit another... How small can I make a ship? Because, like, 16 chests of media defense ammo is a lot. You can empty the barrels with the small space assemblers. Oh, true. But I will need to make batteries in the giant thingy. If I do it that way. Uh, Chucky, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I want another pair of clamps right here, but I don't want anything but default settings on those. We should be able to fit... I think I'd... Mm. I think I do want to see if I can design an even smaller shuttle. 
How small can we go? Like, not caring about the speed at all. And we'll use ion engines. If I recall correctly, the silo can still launch rockets if its inventory is full. Destroying the resulting cards should probably add a condition on the loading inserters. Good point. Although it's going to take us a while to get there. Uh, Hanno Dest, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we're going to go Iron Engine. Uh, a couple of Iron Tanks. And I want, like... Well, we need to fit a console in there somewhere. And we're going to need a solar panel. Smallest possible ion shuttle challenge go. Oh, I think that was not far enough. Let's put this here first. And console. Then we need some walls. Uh, we will need either a another tile vertically or another tile horizontally so that we can do the refuel pipe I think long is better than wide just one tank and chests instead of the other um, I'm actually surprised at how much, uh, ion... Where is one? Oh, it's already back. Oh, I didn't get to see how much fuel we used in this shuttle. But it was already at less than half when it was coming back, so I think we need two. Um... So we're just going to have the one solar panel, who cares if the uh, ion engine has to bottleneck on power, as long as we can run... I'm thinking one laser turret is probably enough. This is getting a bit daring. And instead of controlling this, well, an accumulator is probably still a good idea. Um, but the question is, where do we fit it? If we have to have this extra tile of width, then... Oops. Do we have to have this extra tile of width? I think I would rather have it... Um... Oh. That doesn't actually save any width unless we do this. Then it has to be asymmetrical. Yeah, I don't think that. Let's put the flat solar panel back down here. Uh, we might even have to have a little asymmetry uh, here anyway. So we've got accumulator for the laser. That's almost needed, especially if we go further away from the sun. A constant combinator for the clamp IDs. And then... I wonder how many chests would be optimal here. Oh, we need clamps. I should have put those down first, or a clamp down first. Uh, we got lucky this time. 
Can I put a clamp here? That should be legal. Okay, how are we looking? Ballad. Hull stress is 84. And we should be able to have like three or four chests without that increasing. A hundred and one. Do we want to go with four chests? Uh, launch energy is only four gigajoules. What's the launch energy on this shuttle? 79. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, it was actually worth designing a little baby shuttle. Okay. Hull stress 86. I think we can reduce the hull stress with some thicker walls. Eighty-six point two five. How dare you? Okay, so that's gonna go there. Uh, we're gonna do some kind of clamp IDs. And this is going to be for Meteor Defense Installation Ammo. Oh, there we go. I guess we could also carry some... Uh, repair packs and... No. But we're going to rely on actually preventing the meteors. You can make the waist thinner if really getting the stress down. Um, I suppose we're going we're going for hourglass figure on this ship by like two tiles though. If it's going to be symmetrical. Kind of a weird look. Uh, we don't really need doors. I don't know how much difference it's going to make. Uh, container stress is way down. 86. Actually, I should have put that over here. 87 versus 77. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a weird look. I kind of like it. Let's put this up here. Okay, so the number one thing we want to transport here is media defense installation ammo, 20 per stack. 960 shots in one chest. That should last a minute. Um, should we also bring, like, bots and repair packs and who knows what else? I think it would be a good idea, but we'll base our decision making just on uh, media defense installation ammo. Okay, so, uh, robots. Um, repair packs. Roboport, I guess. And I should have set that to like 47 so we don't go over stack. 
I really hate that the bots do this. Uh... Logistic, construction, repair pack, RoboPort. That's pretty much everything. If anything actually breaks, um, I'm thinking we... Can I remove this? 47, 47, uh, let's say 397. That should be overkill. One, two, three, uh, seven stacks. Let's make it eight. And the rest can be media defense installation ammo. Uh, 40 times 20, 800. Oh, my bad. 797. Okay, let's uh, pick this up for a sec. And as soon as that's empty... Undo. We're needing a lot more media defense installation ammo delivered here. Actually, oh, we only had a hundred. So let's get like two thousand delivered so that we can fill this in one go and have a little bit left over. Top priority is to get this to uh, Calidus. Um, first of all, I actually really quite like this little ship. Let's make a blueprint. I'll make this uh, ID negative three. And I'll just call this MDIA. That's so clunky. Uh, oh. Orbital. How about space outpost? Uh, resupply. I think we're probably... I was going to say we probably only ever need one of these, but then I would need to set up a system whereby we send it to different destinations based on need. Which sounds like fun, actually. Um, let's make a blueprint for this. And... We need the floor tiles. Uh, can we give it some doors? I might find myself wanting doors at some point. What are we at? Hull stress 87. And hull stress... 90. I guess I can live with that. It should be a pretty much imperceptible difference. Okay. Tiles. And I'm just going to have Iron Engine and Media Defense Ammo for the Icon. Space Outpost Resupply. Uh, specifically interplanetary. Because we are not leaving the solar system in this thing. Okay. 
create blueprint. Uh, we should automatically prioritize the laser over the engine, so it might... I forgot to change this to target speed. Let's do that. Select new contents, save, and that's going in the space exploration collection. And then uh, delete this. As soon as these chests are empty. And then we'll put it where it's actually going to get fueled. Oh. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, well, we're just going to have to add some scaffolding over here. Something like this, actually. Alright, cool. Ammo runner, indeed. Oh, for the name, I guess. Uh, you can make the waste thinner. Oh yeah, we did that. Are we done? Start integrity check. Fantastic. Okay, so. I forgot to update this. Negative three. Select new contents. Fantastic. And... I don't think we have a logistic bot. Oh, we're here already. Uh, let's anchor to Calidus Orbit. Over here for now, I think. And head out and fix these solar panels. And we also need to build a receiver station for the ship that we just built. Okay. Uh, this might be a bit silly, but... I mean, it is a bit silly, but theoretically... You could build out a ton of scaffolding. Well, you could do this on the planet anyway. But you could build out a ton of scaffolding, and that sounds very weird. And farm these things by having them auto-collected. Um, by a robot network. It would be very slow, though. Very, very slow. What do we got down here? We never got that scaffolding out. some broken stuff way down here as well. Uh, we need to actually build the media defense installations, but I'm pretty sure we've got those here. 
Oh. Yeah, 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 we do. Okay, cool. Um... I need to place some scaffolding so we can fit them all. Scaffolding... Meteors can land even in empty space, so no scaffolding needed. That is weird. All nice and tidy. And I think that's the last one. Fantastic. Let's coast up this way. And back to Nalva's orbit. So I want to make room here. Whoops. Uh, it's so cute. For our little baby ship. Uh, this goes here. We can remove that now. Actually, I kind of want to draw an outline. construction spiders back here. Did we sort them out? No, one of them's upset. Apparently trash unrequested items did not include. Um, I'm guessing because it wasn't researched yet, but apparently it didn't include the space rocket probes at the time. And I just messed up the color for the leader. Uh, this one. Got it in one. Fantastic. Hey, uh, Phil Good. Good to see you again. Oh, well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, back to our new build. Uh, I think we can manage to manually anchor this thing in the right place. Let's launch. And anchor to Nalvis Orbit. What? What? J. Okay. Cool. Put some iron in this way. I still haven't done that other station. Let's do that. And like this. Power poles again. Uh, yes, but I was still able to anchor it. Uh, I don't suppose we have a medium pole. The medium pole is too small anyway. Okay, uh, this is, this is the time that we use 
Oh, that actually reaches everything. Yeah, this is definitely the time we use these baby ponds. But I don't know if our construction spiders are carrying them. Unsurprisingly, they are not. Because they're having enough trouble with, um... With inventory management. Oh, we do actually slow down when we do this. Okay. Space Constructor Tron. Itty bitty power pole. Um, save that. Don't apply it to the player. Go get the leader. To pick up some of those. I guess we can drop the clamps while we're here. And... I'll come back to this. I, I really am thinking about um, having a dynamic system for where we send this one ship. I think that could be kind of neat. Oh, we could even have multiple of these ships, and that would also still work. Um, so we're going to need a receiver. Can we move this out of the way? And I think it's going to be actually really simple. Um... We're just going to receive the destination signals from... Ooh, no it's not. Okay. At the moment, our destination signals are either going to be Asteroid Belt 324 or Star. I forget the number. So they're not going to add up by accident. And I imagine if you send a destination signal... Well, let's try it right now. Let's not send a launch signal. And we're going to send a destination signal of star 1. Wait, does star 1 even exist? Let's say star 315. Okay, destination signal is locked in. Or is it Asteroid Belt 324? I think it's either going to have an arbitrary order for the signals, or it's going to hold on to whichever one it got first. Yeah. So that's actually very convenient. Um... We're only going to be... As long as we're only sending this to one asteroid belt and one star... That's actually going to be fine. We can just... Uh, on the star end, we can have a signal transmitter... Uh, sending... Uh, this destination signal... If uh, media defense installation ammo is sufficiently low. And those two aren't going to interfere with each other because they're just different signal types. If we did have to deal with uh, multiple asteroid belts, for example... Uh, it would get complicated. If there's just two of them, they could talk to each other, and, like, one of them could be prioritized. And if one is sending, the other doesn't, blah blah blah. If there's more than two, then we need, like, a whole ring of that happening, and that's gonna be... That's gonna be... interesting. Uh, but so far, this is actually gonna be pretty easy.
So we're going to need a signal transmitter. Actually, I'm going to take a short break. Uh, let me in. Let me in. There we go. Let's give it a quick save, shall we? Oh, did we finish glaving? Uh, Soma. Confirm hostile extinction. Fantastic. And we've got another little moon uh, to get oil core fragments from. And we'll definitely set that up with cannons. Hmm. Maybe... Maybe I should even send back crude oil barrels. No, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure we're already at the point where there's enough crude oil uh, everywhere. It's actually the machines that make uh, make the rocket fuel that we're bottlenecked on. Although we can't seem to feed this monster light oil fast enough. We're still... Uh, we're doing an okay job, I think, now of draining the light oil from here down to here. So we basically are bottlenecked on oil production blocks. Which is ridiculous, because we've got uh, 9, 10, 11 of them. And yet, here we are. Hmm. Not sure what to do about that. I mean, I've built the most uh, compact, high-speed block I can. I guess we could swap out the efficiency modules and go full speed. Make a bigger, faster one at an oil patch. Uh, it doesn't really help that much if we do it in an oil patch, but... What I could do is finish this build. Um, or two or three of them. Uh, or as many as it takes to have functionally infinite power on Nalvis. Um, and then we can run these at full power, full speed. Alright, I'm going to take a short break. Uh, let's go to the LTN screensaver. Uh, Ragathian, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Nope.
Okay, let's continue. Screensaver off. I am Freaky. And Brelaco. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, Alright, so we need... Why is it taking... Why do we have two construction bots? That should help a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's get some meteor defense installations. And these things are big, huh? Can you finish this, please? Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to go for uh, as many as we can comfortably fit here. How much space do we need? About this much. Uh, 12 should be overkill, but energy here is free, basically. So why don't we go a little further? Assuming we brought enough. Um, let's go with... Oops. I'm thinking 18. How many did we bring? Uh, only 10, actually. I find that a little bit surprising, but this is mostly to be able to resupply and fix things. Well, in that case... Um, that's the wrong way around. I'll just make it so it's the first 10 that we've built already here. Oh, I've already got those. We need a pylon uh, substation right about here. Looks good. And delete this. Delete these two. Once those are placed or on their way, put those back. Uh, what happened to the bot that was placing this one? It's recharging. Now you're going to put it in a random place, aren't you? Do we have any left? We do. I thought we had 10. This is 12. Uh, where we requested 10, but somehow we had 11. And the bot put it in the wrong order. Lost that coin flip. Can you not just put that there immediately? I guess not. Okay. Now we can fire and forget. 
I'm realizing that where my ship is right now, I would kind of like to make that a drop-off point for our little baby ship. No, let's do it on the surface. That's pretty convenient. Uh, okay, so we need to place our clamps. And we need a Roboport. At least one. We'll need a system to put robots into the network. Come to think of it, um, I would have liked, I don't think we could, uh, no, we definitely could have a system where we reach across with a long arm inserter so that if we don't have any logistic bots yet, we can get those into the network. Just have to swap these two chests around. Um, so that's going to go... What? That's going to go there. And our shuttle is going to go here. Okay, so Roboport. Um, don't know how badly we need this Roboport in this particular location. Um, I should readjust these inserters. Want them going this way and this way and this way, and then we can just put a request a chest right about here. I was having some lunch with the family. How's it going? Not too bad. Um, we got wrecked by some asteroids at our solar array near the sun. Um, so we need to... we need to set up a logistic chain to supply media defense installation ammo. And that's what we're doing now. We've designed a little spaceship. Uh, we've built... Well, we, I haven't done everything to build the supply station for it. But we're working on the other side right now. Uh, we're going to put 480 ammo here. And I could read from the logistic network if this is a buffer chest. If we could transfer from buffer chest to buffer chest, that would be very useful. But as it is, I think we will uh, just put a pile on here. Green wire reading from this requester chest. Thanks for the stream, night all. Take care, whiskers. Thanks for hanging out. And pylon goes up here, perhaps. Um. No, I think we're going to have the ship just take off when it doesn't have ammo. And we're going to store a lot of ammo. 
Um, there's only three chests for this ship, so that's not going to be a problem. Except... Well, why don't I just put the three chests down here? Put this over here. That should be powered. Fantastic. We really don't need the bots to be able to go particularly fast here. Uh, what ID were we running with? Negative three. Oops. Uh, I need another clamp. Wait, I think we're out of clamps. Can I handcraft them? No, absolutely not. Um, clamp. Nothing. Well, I could use just the one to set things up. Uh, our spaceship, just because I like the look of it in the uh, constant combinator, I like to go right to target left, which would be this one. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter which side we do, because we're going to be reading from the ship itself. We're going to say, if ammo... Uh, equals zero, and we take off. I put everything input count, and we're going to have Nervous Orbit as our target launch signal, and whenever we're not detecting ammo, we're going to be sending the launch signal. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we would have run into this problem before if this was going to auto-launch the ship as soon as it landed because of a little delay. Um, but if that was the case, I would simply change this to media defense installation ammo equals negative one, and then put a negative one signal here. That wouldn't change anything, actually. Genius. Um, okay, why don't we... Is that actually it? Why don't we send our ship? Uh, but first... Okay, we've already got the ion drop-off there. That's good. Seven... Um, I would like to mirror this on the other side, if I can. I don't think this is going to line up the same way. It is one off. What is this, seven and seven? So that's a fifteen. That works. This should go here. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. And then, theoretically, that goes there. That would be ten tiles. A couple of corner pipes. And this will be an even number, won't it? Yep. And that looks pretty good. 
Oh, we should have some pumps in here as well. Uh, how about... 5-3 and pump. to actually request this stuff. Um, we're looking for two chests. Hmm. What does this train normally bring? Bot, bot, repair pack. I think we could go for a filter inserter here. And a filter inserter here. Oh, those are not construction spiders, are they? I have to send you back for something. I believe it was these mini power poles. Um... How many tiles is this? 16. And this is... Looking good. We need a signal transmitter. And I guess here is the most logical spot. I'm going to read... Oh, we need a combinator. Uh, decide a combinator. Read from requested chests. Don't go to the output, go to the input. And... Uh, we're bringing like two... and a. How much is our maximum that we're carrying in this thing? For media defense installation ammo, 960 times 2, plus 7, plus 800. Uh, 1920 plus, let's call it 700. Nineteen twenty plus 797, let's just assume we get the minimum. Uh, 2,717. So if there's 2,717... If there's room for that here, we want to send for our shuttle. Uh, we've got... I did not mean to do that. 2,717. Okay. Uh, 48 times 20 times 3 is 2880 uh 163 163 shots will last a minute or we could just add a fourth chest and keep things really simple okay 480 times 4 Wait, what? No, we can fit more than that. Stack size is 20. Uh, 960 times 4. And let's divide that by 2, actually. Well, let's just pick something arbitrary. Um... If we drop down to, like, 500, that should be plenty. And it leaves room for the shuttle to completely empty itself. Uh, if media defense installation ammo is less than 500, output everything input count. Constant combinator. Uh, 
is it 315? Star 315. And launch. I could add some conditions so that it doesn't take off if it's missing resources or something. At the other end. But if it's not full I would, and we're getting low, I would rather it bring some resources. Probably. We'll keep it simple for now anyway. Uh, Calidus Orbit Resupply. Did I spell that right? C-A-L-L-I-D. One L. Uh, that should be fine, actually. If media defense ammo equals zero in the shuttle, uh, I'm just going to keep calling it the shuttle because I do it automatically. Uh, then take off, go back to Nalva's orbit. Okay. How's our power? It's totally fine. Uh, let's just make sure we've got everything over here. It would help if we actually brought the... Um, ammo. We also need logistic... We also need roboports. I don't know how necessary those really are, but whatever. Ammo. And roboport. Filter, in, filter insert is a bit slow, of course, but I don't think we're going to need overall for this to be supplied super fast. Uh, so, Roboport. And Meteor Defense Installation. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably need some more chests for that, actually. Uh, fair enough. Could you please leave? Thank you. We'll just put these chests over here. And I think we'll put all the bot things here. Air pack. That'll do. And Meteor Defense Installation Ammo. Passive Provider. Um, that's already being reported from the Logistic Network. Cool, I think we're ready. Uh, Let's go for, let's ask for almost three chests full of ammo here. 800 plus, let's go 2800. Uh, Quan Quan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I think we're good. Assuming we are producing media defense installation ammo here somewhere. We've got 372, so my guess would be yes. Although... There it is, 200. We should probably increase that. Also, we've got a lot of stuff we're always trying to craft at the moment because we're out of blue circuits, but we've still got a couple of slots free. So that shouldn't pose any 
difficulties. Uh, we need our spider to come back with a satellite dish. Not in the habit of carrying those right now. And hopefully by the time it gets back, we'll have some ammo here. Uh, and I forgot to put down some stuff for the logic. I need to connect it to this anyway. But it's basically just going to be... Uh, I think we need to read from... Wait, this didn't get connected. Oh, did I accidentally break it? I could have sworn there was a third add-on power pole that I put in here. Well, we found that... Yeah, there we go. Okay. So those do all reach because of this one. That's cool. Uh, and we actually do need the flat solar panel also. Whoops. Uh, yeah, we're going to need another power pole. There's nothing for it. Can we go pixel perfect? Seems good. Well, in that case... Just connect... Engine... Solar panel... Accumulator, laser turret, and console. I guess I could have used a medium pole if I just moved this down here. Except we need power down this way as well. Okay, let's update our blueprint after I swapped those chests around. No scaffolding, please. And that looks good to me. Fantastic. Where are our spiders? They are a few minutes out. What about the train? Uh, what's our request threshold? Only 10. So we should be receiving media defense installation ammo here already. Uh, I also need to not have this stuff removed immediately. And ammo. Uh, that goes for the satellite stuff as well. We're going to have asteroid belt probes, uh, star probes, and uh, I guess the data that comes from them. I don't want those getting shoved into the trash instead of our intended chests. Oh. What is this? No. Why... Why would you do this? Because I removed that signal for like two seconds? 
That's probably why. Fair enough. Um, I would like... If I can... I don't need that inserter. To fit this... Here. Perfect. And this one goes here. What have we got? Oh, this is the trash train taking our probes away. Rip. It'll come back. Or they will come back. Okay, so... I guess this will be negative 4, negative 5, since this is negative 3. And one, two, three, four, five, six in between. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fantastic. Let's drop our resupply in here. Seven. And... Oh, the spiders are back. A little bit quicker than I expected. In fact, I'm surprised we don't have a train coming here with the ammo yet. What's going on there? Are we requesting ammo somewhere else? I don't see it here. No, that's what's in the logistic network. Uh, even so, I don't see ammo requested here. I could send the old shuttle to bring us more media defense installations. I don't see why not. Let's go to Calidus Orbit. Go. And, oh, this is where our ammo was going. I did request a lot of it. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Um, let's change this back, because we're going to be giving the ammo at the other stop. Let's just put that down to like 200. We've already got a bunch of extra ammo over here. We're going to get rid of it. Back in circulation. That's going to go back to the mall. Oh, and could you please not, actually? Actually, can I get you to deliver it over here instead? Empty cargo? Don't need a wait condition on the temp stop. And then back to the depot. Fantastic. And I think we've all also got a proper scheduled delivery coming. Nice. Alright, let's set this to Calidus Orbit Resupply. And our condition is going to be... I could set it to have two conditions, that we have to have full or some amount of ammo. And we're also receiving a request to go somewhere. What just happened? Oh, I sent it to the wrong 
station because I couldn't see properly. Empty cargo. And it's not going to be able to empty. Alright, take those back to the mall. I mean, back to the trash, which will end up back in the mall, I guess. How about... Yeah, I think I will set it up so that we're going to have Decider Combinator. Um... We're going to listen to what's in these chests. And I'll connect this over here as well. Uh, if heavy uh, media defense installation ammo is greater than... I don't know, how much have we got? 28, uh, 40, 50? I could have just looked here. We've actually got 87. If media defense installation ammo greater than 80, uh, output everything input count. That's the minimum that we're going to ask for before we receive... Uh, a signal from this thing. I should make it red on the other end. This will be a red wire. So then... Red wire comes out of this one, just like we usually do without constant combinators. And we're going to say, um, yeah, we're going to be receiving, let's just confirm this. We're not receiving any signal for media defense installation ammo from over there. If we have enough ammo to make it worth a trip, and we're going to set that very low just in case, then pass everything through, and the everything through that we're passing includes a launch signal with destination Calidus orbit, and I don't know why we're not launching right now, probably because I forgot to connect to the console. Fantastic. I should change the name of this, um, because it's, the whole point is multiple destinations can send a signal to tell it to come somewhere. Uh, so we're going to say Meteor Defense Installation Ammo Resupply. That is a mouthful. And then we pretty much just copy-paste except for the destination signal. Uh, when we build this in... The asteroid belt. I think I will wait till the ship gets here to confirm it's working. Uh, also, I'll wait till the shuttle gets here to give us some more media defense installations. I'll take those, thank you very much. So how far out is our ship? Uh, what's our speed? 13, 16. I can live with this. 
this is the whole point of this ship, is that it can get around. Um, and that's about it. We're not going to need massive deliveries of media defense installation ammo too often. Um, this is the smallest ship that we can make that gets around effectively. And it used almost nothing uh, to get this far as well. Alright, what should it be called? Um... Outpost... Space Outpost... Resupply? So basically, the the laser turret automatically has priority over, like, anything else. Um, we've got more than enough power. I'm pretty sure we have more than enough power out as far as the asteroid belt. I was going to say in the entire solar system, but that might be a lie. Imagine this thing was going to Calidus Asteroid Belt 2. Solar is 20%. Um, so we would get 20% of 800, which is 160. Oh, but it's, it's in orbit. Wait, hold on, now this orbit, well, it's not in orbit, it's in space. 466%, 490%, 490%, 490%, 490%, 490%, 490%, 490%, 490 percent yeah, this is actually down to 20% even though we're in space. Uh, so if this thing went far enough out, it might be in serious trouble. But we're still at 172% when we go to the asteroid belt. I probably should have done this math before building this thing. Um, sorry, what was that percentage? 172%. Well, okay, the minimum consumption for the laser is only 24 kilowatts. This thing's minimum consumption is much worse. So, 800 kilowatts times 1.72 is 1.376 megawatts. Which is more than enough. Uh, minimum consumption between the laser and the spaceship ion engine is like 357 kilowatts or something. And so we'll have a surplus while we're coasting. And we're gonna... the accumulator charge is gonna build up. Um... The laser is going to recharge, and then we get another little burst of acceleration until we get there. Lame ship name? What about the Quartermaster? <laughs> okay. I do agree it's a lame ship name, so... Quartermaster it is. How long does it take to get to the destination? Uh, go, heading to Calidus orbit right now. We're looking at 17, 20... It's going to be the average between these. I think it's about 20 minutes. Perfect. Thank you. Isn't this thing small enough that you could skip the solar panel and use a few accumulators instead? I don't think so. Um, is it, watch the energy in the accumulator when the ion engine fires. 5.5 5 and 4.1 from just that little burst. Um, so we do need a supply of energy. Uh, the only... The only ship that we've made that um, 
works off of a store of energy as opposed to something that produces it. Well, this thing stores heat. Uh, it doesn't get any more while it's in transit, but it stores a ridiculous amount of heat which we can convert to electricity with these uh, condenser turbines. Uh, apparently you could... I mean, you, you definitely technically could make a steam-powered ship that just stores hot steam. I don't know how far you'd be able to get. As my calculation, you need four solar panel two to supply one ion engine between asteroid belt one and solar orbit. Ion engine needs 10 megawatts. It needs 10 megawatts to go full speed, yes, a little bit more than that. Um, once this thing actually gets past uh, this line and starts going closer to the sun, it's actually going to go faster. Conversely, going to the Calidus asteroid belt and back is going to take longer. But I still think it's going to be sufficient for just resupplying uh, media defense installation ammo. Probably. We could always just make another ship. Have you ever seen the movie Contact? I actually missed that one. I think I read the book, though. Yeah, I think I did read the book. Unless you have, like, 20 installations needing resupply. Um, well, we do have 18, but they'll only fire as many shots as it takes um, to keep a media from landing. Twenty separate ones. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I was just beginning to think you might be saying that, actually. Uh, you are switched off. Okay. I should probably go ahead and visit uh, Via Terra and give it some energy beam receivers. And anywhere else that we're running nuclear power in the solar system. Build that second shuttle. First rule in government spending, why have one when you can have twice the cost? Two at twice the cost. I mean, for Factorio, uh, upfront cost is pretty irrelevant, generally. The only reason that I would limit building new things at all is UPS. But, um... Uh, I think we missed that boat. How do I... Yeah. I, I think it might be a little bit late for that. I could see myself bringing in the old ships, uh, building bigger, better, newer ships. Um... So that we get more throughput with fewer, like, nuclear reactors and stuff. I don't know how much difference that's going to make. Uh, Harnad, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I thought the rule of government spending is less with more money. Uh, the rule of government spending lately, in our country at least, is... Don't give people who've lost their home to floods anything. That's cool. Oh, and do everything you can to make uh, the next floods and the next floods worse, and so on. Uh, but moving right along. Look at this little thing. It's barely cruising along. <laughs> What's our ETA? Is it getting better? I mean, it's obviously getting better, but are we going faster? Maybe real world, but in the contact universe they had a space machine uh so it's not set in reality that they had like a big sphere thing that was 
like high level science magic to go to another star or something, right? Rule one is always spend your allocated budget. Yeah, that's a that's a commonly understood perverse incentive in a lot of organizational structures. All right, uh, I should send my Alvis construction spiders back up here. I don't think. Actually, they're not carrying any heat exchangers or steam turbines. I may have a spider gang for that. Uh, then again, maybe not. I don't think I do. Uh, why don't we get... I I'm going to borrow the deconstruction spiders for this. Since they should have some plenty of spare inventory, actually. What? Which one's the leader? Uh, ooh, what? No. Just one little step. Don't hide behind your friends. There you go. Okay, cool. Uh, we need some nuclear stuff. Well, we don't need a nuclear reactor, we need everything else. Um, so let's go with, I don't know, 200 each, 50, and 100 or something. What's the color here? 200, 0, 200. Okay. Copy that to all of these. Missing equipment. This one's got better... No, it doesn't. Why does the leader have an old portable RTG and the rest have Mark IIs? That's surprising. Just a consequence of lazy accounting? When you have dinosaurs doing the bean counting, you can't really expect more. Uh, big spinny machine. Yes. Yes, indeed. I want a big spinny machine. Let's get these spiders a bit closer to the stuff that they're requesting. And then I'll send them up here to drop off as much of this as they can. If they're going to do it that bad, then they deserve to lose the money. Uh, well, I don't think what they deserve much comes into it. Let's get some scaffolding down there. I'm gonna just pick some up. And fly on down. I should get some more jetpacks in this thing most of the time. That's much better. Uh, my personal shuttle should be here, just about. Almost there. Alright, let's go with... That. OCD satiated. Slam into our ship. Oh! Oh! Top tier speedrun strats. I just flew into the ship. Possibly because I hit this sweet spot right here. Possibly because of my speed. Uh, maybe both. I managed to get over the wall. 
Okay, do it again. I'm going to try. First, I'm going to try what I don't think is going to work to see if... You know, see, see if we can try to substantiate our working hypothesis here. Yeah, I think we need to be going fast. And we probably want to aim for the engine or the spot between the engine and the wall. Which is going to be hard when we can't see quite where we're going. Hey, did it again. Two for two. That's awesome. Someone clipped that. That's beautiful. Next time we board a ship, we're doing that. So, who needs doors? Let's get rid of these stupid doors. I'm not just kidding. But you could. As long as you don't run out of uh, rocket fuel. Or whatever you're using to fly. Um, the joyride is... Uh, two minutes out. 700% solar right now. Plus 1300 actually. Yeah, the, uh... How much do we get out of one solar panel here? 12.1 megawatts. So by the time our... By the time our little quartermaster it is, is uh, actually gets here, it's going to be able to accelerate to its theoretical top speed. And when it leaves, it's going to accelerate as fast as possible, and then run out of energy around about here, coast for a bit. I don't know how long. I don't think that coasting is going to last very long. This is a, this is a video game space soup, after all. It's not like we keep our momentum. Clip. All right, fantastic. Thanks, fat boy. Let me have a look at this. An error occurred? Oh, that's just the preview thing. And we probably want to aim for the engine, or the spot between the engine and the wall. Here it comes. Which is going to be hard when we can't see quite where we're going. Hey, did it again. Fantastic. Two two. Beautiful. Thanks for clipping that. Okay. Um, what are we doing now? I'm just waiting on a couple of ships. Can I do something useful? While we wait. Whether it's building something or figuring something out. How's our Vulcanite looking? The secondary block is not doing anything right now, but the first one should be still going full speed. Fantastic. Why am... Why does this side look different to this side? Oh, this has... Oh. Well, okay, that was short-lived. But it looked like we were getting full throughput from both sides, but this side was not looking the same as this one. Not entirely sure why that would be. Here we go. I need to remember to bring our energy beam receiver here. Uh, so this thing is 2.4 megawatts. I did test it a little bit, um, although I find testing it with like editor extensions, putting in an uh, uh, putting in a what's the word I'm looking for. Putting in a arbitrary sync for power and watching what happens. Not as good of a test necessarily as just running this thing for quite a while under real conditions. But when I did run the test, uh, we got all of the steam turbines able to consume at 60 per second simultaneously. Uh, so this is 103 and 103 steam turbines and 60 heat exchangers in each quarter. So we've got four times the lowest common denominator for a perfect ratio here. 
And with energy beam receivers, heat pipes and heat exchangers, uh, really the bottleneck, the limitation is how far can we transfer the heat? We can have up to 10k heat here, but we can only have a thousand on the heat pipe. Um, I forgot to get offshore pumps. How many offshore pumps do we need? Whoops. Uh, 24. Let's just get the leader to carry that. Not gigawatts? Did I say... megawatts? It's 2400 megawatts. 2.4 gigawatts. Uh, Ian Newer, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oof, that UPS though? Yeah, we're working on it. Um, we're still in the double digits, but we'll get there. I'm kidding, I hope. Um, I have been cleaning up some old stuff and rebuilding it with better beacons and fewer machines and so on. Uh, so that we can, if not get our UPS back up, then at least uh, limit the damage. Um, okay. Shuttle should be here by now. It is fantastic. Anchor to here, please. And I think it was just the media defense installation. Okay, you can... Uh, okay. Why do we have one logistic bot? Oh, it's a separate robo network, that's why. I think the major issue is the amount of train signals you have, given how much the game stutters when you change those. It's possible. Um, we can actually look at the uh, game update. Heat manager is at 1 at this point. I'm pretty sure that's significantly higher than it's been before. Entity update is 12.3. Trains is 2.5, let's say. Which just went up to 3.3. It got to 4. Uh, circuit networks are actually 6.7. We use a lot of circuit networks here. Script update, 3.1. I think that's like LTN, uh, crafting combinator and so on. Also the spaceships. Yeah, so trains aren't that big of a deal. Why is electricity at 8? Does nuclear count for that? Uh, I don't know. Okay, uh, did we get our installations built? We did not. Give to me the install. Okay. How about I turn this into a radar construction pylon for a second? And I thought that would mean... Oh, there's no construction bots in this network. Fantastic. Now we just need the ammo to actually get here. Which, in hindsight, I could have shoved into this thing before it kicked off. Uh, I have... 300 productivity modules here. 
How many do we have in orbit right now? Uh, zero. I doubt I would have exactly 300. Unless... I, we, we appear to have exactly 300 blood sixes. Okay then. And there's another 20 in here. Oh, we have more here. We've got another 101. That's pretty good, actually. We can upgrade a block or two on Nalvas for maximum productivity. Maybe coal would be a good idea. I think we've already got coal. We might not have enough throughput for coal right now. But I don't see this getting over filled, so it's probably fine. And away you go. Fantastic. Uh, liquid rocket fuel looks a lot better if you look over here, but I actually prioritized those. Okay, copper and iron are not crying anymore. Is it actually happening? Have we caught up with liquid rocket fuel? Mostly? Oh, that's beautiful. I never thought I'd see the day. I actually thought I would have to go back to using cargo rockets. Okay, so anyway, let's make 700 more space shuttles. Perhaps not. Uh, where is our little ship? It is speeding up. 4.8 megawatts. We're halfway to... We're almost halfway to running this thing at full speed. Um, I wonder if... By the time we get to the sun, this thing could go... Just full speed all the time and manage to shoot down all the asteroids. Uh, but yeah, we're up to like 18. Average is probably like 16 uh, speed, as opposed to 8 or whatever it was when we started. So it'll be here in six, 5 or 6 game minutes. Um, let's swap that pylon substation back in. And did I already put the logic here to take off again? I think I did. We used to carry um, spaceship construction stuff in this shuttle. It would probably be a good idea. Um, what would definitely be a good idea is requesting spaceship building stuff in the hotbox, in case we ever need to use it to rescue some ships again. I need to put all of... oh, I just need to turn this back on. That's nice and easy. And I need to put some requests over here for spaceship stuff. Consoles... We'll see how many stacks are left over after this is full. May as well have this requesting antimatter ahead of time. Okay. Should I just trust... We don't really need this, um, clamp. I'll double check. We're doing... Anchor using spaceship right. Yeah, so we don't really need this one. I think this is all set up just fine already. 
I'll have a little faith and leave for the next one. Um, let's send this back to Nalvis Orbit. Do I want anything first? I don't think so. No, I think we're fine. Nalvis Orbit? Oh, wait. I want... I definitely want to take the delivery cannons to the next location. That was close. Uh, can we perhaps put all the delivery cannons in one spot for a second? Uh, not delivery cannons, media defense installations. What do we got? Four. It's not quite what I'm looking for. But it's better than nothing. Oh, 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 oh. I almost forgot while we're here. The reason I was going to come here in the first place. Um, we should set up the silo. Hi, T-Rex and chat. Been a while. Good to see you. Finn Shady. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't suppose we've already had some meteor attacks at the asteroid field? No, we're good. Um, I'm just going to cross my fingers that we can get some other stuff done before we go and sort that out. Okay. Um, we're going to need some more scaffolding eventually. But if I can get away with it, I would like to... That's right, I wanted to copy-paste what we already did at the asteroid belt. Um, minus the ship, of course. I made a blueprint for it, didn't I? Okay. Let's see... If I can fit that somewhere, I really seriously doubt it. Uh, let's just... Oh, that's right, I was considering putting it, like, over here. But I think we may as well have everything... in the same robot network up this way. Uh, so let's add some... Scaffolding over here. And... That's actually almost perfect. I could bring this a bit closer, but now. We need to go back for plants anyway. I'll set... I think I'll just bring the hotbox over. Just keep bringing more ships over. Uh, why are we not receiving spaceship parts yet? We should be... We are requesting spaceship parts. It's just taking a little while to get them. We've got our ammo here, that's good. I'm pretty sure this whole thing is built. I haven't built this part yet, though. And that circuit logic is going to be slightly different. So this one is going to the sun. And I need to connect the wiring. Read and write. And this is already connected. If we're full of space probe rockets... Wait, no. This is going to be a bit different. Because we're going with space probe rockets and also asteroid belt probes. Um, 
the easiest way to do this normally would be um, if everything... Well, it's actually the same... It's not the same stack size. It is the same stack size. Uh, we would say if everything equals some number, or if they're different amounts that we're looking for, everything equals negative one, and then have some offsets in the constant combinator. But we can't just ignore the signals that we're trying to push through when we evaluate everything. So we might actually need three combinators to do this, unfortunately. I would love to come up with a more clever way to do it. We basically need to say, um, I'll just double check this, 8 times 48, 384. Uh, we need to say, oh, what, uh, no, 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 stop. I should have thought that through. That's my bad. Could you please go back to Nervous Orbit? Rip a little bit of eye on stream there. Add what you want as negative input, then launch if everything is greater than or equal to zero. That... That would probably do it. Yeah. This might be a new tool. Uh, Morpheus out. Good call. Let's think this through. Uh, so we need 384 of these things. And we're going with... Uh, asteroid belt probe this time. Negative 384. Uh, and... Space rocket probe, negative 384. If everything is greater than or equal to zero, output everything input count. I think that does it, yeah. Very nice, very succinct. One newbie question, is it even possible to play the SE mod without combinator knowledge? Uh, it's difficult for me to answer because I automatically go to Combinator stuff a lot of the time. Um, a viewer could probably answer it better because I would have to think back through the entire thing. I've definitely heard Arcospheres, you're absolutely going to need Combinator knowledge, I think. Or probably if you were to try to do it without combinators, it'd be a self-imposed challenge where like, kind of like that person who made logic gates using trains. Combinators seem complex at first, but they do get very understandable, indeed. Uh, Meloxel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's basically, if you have more than X amount of Y item, then do Z. Uh, yep. There's a lot you can do with them, but... Okay, even if you've got programming uh, training, learning to think in low level, as it's called, uh, terms, like where you can only work with very simple uh, signals and conditions and stuff, and you have to build more complex things out of that. There's definitely a learning curve to it. Uh, and also Factorio Combinators have some, at least as far as I've seen, uh, very unusual modes of operation. But basically you build up your understanding and your, your tools bit by bit. This um, everything greater than or equal to zero is actually something I've never thought of before. And now that I'm aware of it, it's going to come in handy a lot. Okay, thanks. So we'll start to learn doing combinators. Uh, good luck. Uh, 
or possibly I'll put out the first tutorial before you start looking that up, if I can. I've got the scripting done, I need to finish recording and editing. Uh, editing. That's not a time sink. Uh, part 145 already and 24 FPS, are you going to make it to the end before FPS collapses? We'll see. Okay, so if we've got 384 of both of these, we're going to take off. Uh, that's fantastic. And now we need to say... Uh, I don't want to copy that, actually. I just want this. Negative 384 space rocket probe. And negative 384 of star probe. Fantastic. Oh, we've got another train coming with probes. Uh, this needs to be set to negative one, two, three. I guess this will be negative four. Oops. And I'll make this one negative five. We'll have the exact same ship, but with this set to negative five. Uh, space probe rocket and also asteroid belt probe. Is what's supposed to be in here. Uh, let me make a temporary blueprint real quick. And we'll build another one of these. Once again, we need to... I think I'll actually set it up here so that we've got um, both of these piped to ground. Alright, where's our little temporary blueprint we just made? I think it's this one. No, that one's missing the icon. Is it this it? Oh, no, that's a small one. Here we go. Okay, so I know that's up to date. This one is going to be star probe. And negative five. And also negative five. Fantastic. We disconnect that. Um, let's make some room. Like that. And we've already got our ion stream here. So if I get this to take off, destination is Nalvis Orbit. It should immediately clamp back to here. It should immediately clamp back to here. What's your problem? You've got power. You've got fuel. I think we just need to do this manually at least once. Okay. Now then, uh, 
I think this is all good to go already. Oh, and the ship name, of course. Uh, this should be Asteroid Probe Rocket. And this will be Solar Probe Rocket. As a precaution so it doesn't run out after copy-paste, you need to start the ship at least once manually after it launches. Usually, yeah, I've seen that quite a few times, but when I had the... Is it for different... Does it actually remember different blueprints? Because a lot of times I'm pretty sure I've put down, for example... Uh, you know, Deadwood Space Truck number 6. And as soon as I build it, I just turn the combinators on. And then it leaves, does its thing automatically. It's probably... If I had fiddled with the combinator, I wonder if that would have done something. I'll go you one tip. If you request something, don't check for a missing signal, but a everything is here signal. If you don't do that, you might regret it, indeed. Or, for example... If you are sending things via cannon, uh, you definitely want to set that to please send explosives as opposed to we do not, uh, an absence of a signal to say we don't have any explosives. Because if this breaks or if there's a power outage, we don't actually want infinite explosives sent here. Although... I would definitely prefer to have more than the zero explosives that we're sending here right now. Um, that would seem to be preferable. What is happening? We've got explosives here. Pentium DC check. Oh no, it happened. Uh, it shouldn't have happened. We, we would have had to run out of both explosives and delivery cannon capsules at the same time. I think. Because the thing I changed here is we pulse when we want to pick up um, explosives, for example. Was there ever power problems over here? Like, maybe when we were patching the energy beam receivers in. Ooh, wow. Okay. No trouble whatsoever getting enough heat to the edge of this old build. Uh, that's good. Looks very cool. Uh, but yeah... When we lack explosives, we send a signal greater than zero explosives. Um, and if this thing breaks, we don't send that signal. Um, the idea of this patch here is so that we only send one at a time, or at least one at a time per delivery cannon. But... I don't understand. We've already got the explosives just waiting. The moment we sent the moment we pulse that signal through. Um one, two, three, four. We should receive two hundred explosives. What could I do to... 
I suppose I could have this thing periodically reset itself. Do you have anything more to research? Uh, only a little bit. <laughs> only a little... I'm kidding. That's, that's a lot of stuff. Um, and it's actually like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different new research things we have to finish. Different new sciences we still have to finish making. Yeah, my concern earlier was if, for example, we ran out of delivery cannon capsules, when we receive this pulse, uh, it's not going to put the delivery cannon capsule in, and this is going to be stuck forever. Um, because we're constantly receiving the signal for explosives, and we don't do a, a pulse... What I really need is, instead of a typical pulse generator, I need to turn a constant signal into send a pulse once every minute or something. Which, now that I think about it, is probably really easy. Um, so we have a timer. Uh, if T is greater than... 300, output, wait, while t is less than 300, output t input count, and then 1t constantly being transmitted into this, we connect it to its own input, so every tick uh, we receive 1t from here, uh, without the constant combinator input, this is receiving 189 at its input, one tick later it outputs 189, and then instantaneously it travels across the wire, and the process repeats itself. Uh, so here we have a timer that's going to reset every 300 ticks, which is 5 seconds. Uh, 3600 is 1 minute. Okay. So what I want is... So we've got a timer. I think I have... I, I need an extra combinator for this. Um, if T is equal to, let's say, 1, output everything input count. And whatever input we're receiving uh, from the other planet. Let's say we're asking for explosives. Yeah, I think I overcomplicated this. So we're just going to receive the timer there. And whenever this is, whenever time is equal to one, uh, it's going to pulse through whatever's over here, but just one tick. That would probably be a better system. And we could do that at the, um, at the outpost side of things. So we don't have to have, we don't have to add, um, a pulse generator over here for each of the high throughput, uh, outposts. We can just do that logic on the other side. Um, yeah, I literally just need to put something like this over here. I should have left some combinators here. That would have made it so that I could do this just immediately. I didn't pay attention, what was the problem? Amount of stuff at target of delivery cannon? Yeah, so we're sharing one chest to receive a bunch of delivery cannon stuff. Um, we need lots of explosives, so I've got like possibly slightly overkill. I've got four delivery cannons uh, for explosives 
aimed at that chest. Um, when we receive a signal saying that we want explosives, normally what we do is just enable um, enable this inserter. It's got a stack size of one so that we don't put this stuff in too quick, but we will get more than one uh, delivery cannon capsule put into this machine. Perfect timing with that illustration. Um, so because it's very dangerous to... Once we reach a certain threshold, it's dangerous to send more stuff than we intend to, um, depending on the volume. Uh, what I added here is a pulse generator, so the constant signal that's coming across the signal receiver gets turned into just one tick of that signal. Uh, so the inserter will only put one thing in at that time. Um, what I really, really want... Okay, so what, I, what I'm doing instead now is... We have an arbitrary timer. Every time it resets, we pass through the signal. But what I'd really like to do is some combination of the two. I don't know how possible that is. I got the same setup, but instead of capsules, I limit material put in with a defined buffer size on the receiving end. Indeed. Um... What do you mean by defined buffer size? Oh, yeah, no, I've got that as well. Um, so... Here we have each less than or equal to one output, one each. Um, and for the stuff that we just want to make sure we have a stack of, uh, I've just got copper one, iron one, etc. Uh, so once we've actually got zero in the chest, that condition is going to be true. Uh, each is equal to one. Um, but for explosives, I've set it to negative 200. So we're aiming to have four stacks of explosives in here. Um, but previously I haven't gone to the trouble of being really precise with how many uh, stacks we end up receiving because of that trouble with the inserters putting in multiple delivery cannon capsules. So if I can f come up with... I mean, the pulse system does work except for the whole... I don't know why it stopped this time. I did actually have a couple of theories on how it might accidentally stop. I don't know why it's still stopped. If it's got both resources, that shouldn't be happening. It's... oh... I bet it's because when we're completely empty on explosives and we pulse a request and all four of them fire at the same time and then we consume all of the explosives immediately, uh, then we're sending a request again before, uh, before the cannons are ready to start the next recipe even. No, it shouldn't matter because we would we can put the we can put the delivery cannon capsule in any time. Yeah, I I still don't know how it's stopping itself. So we're going to send explosives. That was from one little one tick pulse. Um we're sending one stack from each of these. And then... It arrives. And we should see... Is it going... Is, is it there? Don't tell me... 
You're joking. We emptied the chest so quickly that it doesn't even register that we had explosives. That's our problem. Okay. Alright. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought that would be the case. Um stepping through it, thinking about it. So we're receiving explosives from here. That wasn't explosives. Okay. Um, positive explosive signal here. Oh, it's because we're aiming for 200. We're never meeting the condition that we're not asking for more explosives, therefore we don't pulse it again. If I set this to 1, that's why the other resources haven't had a problem. Okay. And I think we have the same thing over here, but explosives still seem to be working. Look at that. That's our difference. I'm pretty sure this is going to work now, consistently. Yeah, because we never met the condition that we weren't still asking for explosives. Okay. So what I really want is, on a per-resource basis, the moment that we are asking for explosives on this end, we get a tick at the other end, and then... Can we do a multi-timer with each? I, w I want to receive a tick when we start asking for explosives. And if we're still asking for explosives, like, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute later, however long it should take to receive them, plus a, a second or two, uh, tick again until we get them. Can I squeeze that logic in for multiple resources? Uh, using each, I wonder. Because... Hmm. Because ideally, I want them to be all on different timers. As in... Can, can we make it happen with one combinator to have different timers happening at the same time? So something like... This is perfect, actually, because we'll be sending a signal of one for a resource when we want it. Um, so we're going to say each less than or equal to one minute. Let's say 30 seconds. I think it takes... I'm pretty sure it takes less than 30 seconds um, to receive that input. Okay. Each less than 1800 output each input count. Explosives. And that's going to tick up. Let's set it to a smaller amount so we can see it. Uh, 10 seconds. And then each equal to 1 output each. And then we just need something to illustrate that it's actually working. But we should, if we watch closely, when this gets to 600, we should see the output flicker at one explosive. Yep. Um, how about this? I want... Five chests. Stack size one. And we're going to put in... What do I have with me? Oh, there's only one problem, if you'd call it that. It, once this stops, it holds on to an arbitrary amount of timing. I don't think that is actually a problem. 
Uh, let's say flat solar panel, holmium accumulator. Uh, wait, no, 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 not unconditional. How dare you? Uh, we're going to say flat solar panel greater than zero. Holmium accumulator greater than zero. What else do I have in my inventory? Modules greater than zero. Rods and efficiencies, I think I have. Okay. And accumulators. Okay, so I want to switch these on at different times. Switch all those off. Uh, Hornominator, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, let's test these things. Um. Speed module six and productivity six and efficiency six. Okay, so I'm going to turn these on at different times and they should all be on their own independent 10 second timer. On the same combinator. And 500, 550, here we go. Beautiful. This is how we're going to do it. Nice UPS, thank you. What are those things? Uh, these things, the energy beam emitters. King, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you could implement a timer for cannon loading instead. Only load if energy is high enough to fire. Uh, it won't... We can't read the energy in the cannon. Um, unfortunately. Seems you have ghosted combinators in space. Ghosted combinators in space. What? Could just feed it through a modulo operator instead. Uh, possibly. We do need a timer. Well, we need a decider combinator so that we can reset the timer. No, I don't want it counting up forever. Um, I would rather have it reset, but maybe, uh, we need an arithmetic for that. We would still need a decider, right? No, 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 no. Arithmetic combinator, um, modulo 600. Oh, that's not what I want. Each modulo 600 output each. So, when the remainder for 600 is zero, I would need this to be flat solar panel equals zero, right? Which is not what I'm looking for in this use case. I think the box with the long hand inserter does not work correctly, or it looks like it. Let me have a look. Uh, I think it probably works. I mean, it reaches the chest, but 
We can't put filters on a long-handed, unfortunately. Oh. Oh, I see. I don't know when this happened, but for some reason... I, I could have sworn it didn't used to work this way, but they always take repair packs from buffer chests. I mean, from uh, robo ports and put them in buffer chests. Um, so in that case... I think we just add ourselves one of these. Wait, that's where I usually put... Let's put this here. We're going to have a request a chest. We're going to do our usual bot management here. Actually, I only want um, 50... Exactly 50 logistic bots this time. Read Rose Bot Statistics, Blacklist. Um, that goes there. Basically, the modulo would reset the timer for you as it loops back. Only it resets to 1 instead of 0. Uh, I'm trying to do two things at once. Hold on. So we need the repair packs here so that the... Um, so that the bots stop trying to take them back here. And from yesterday, did you fix your coal line on Nalvis? Uh, do you mean the one where I didn't bother putting better signals in yet? It is working, it's just a bit slow. Or was something broken? We had our lazy... Um, lazy mind design that I updated so that we'd actually get a balanced, well not balanced, but it'll get to every chest uh, load from each side, as opposed to belts going here and belts going here, which isn't so good when we run out of resources or if they don't exist there in the first place in a certain area. Um, so we did finalize that design, um, but I don't know what else you mean by fixing. Oh, uh, the, uh, if you mean to Deadwood, where we're getting our coal ore fragments, yes, absolutely. Um, and we've even got, I think this was the first, uh, energy beam emitter I set up into planetary. Um, that is going to what was a nuclear reactor, um, and we're running all of our power off that, or most of it. So we're now consistently getting just under 90 uh, coal core fragments per second. Come to think of it... Oh. Wait, what? What happened to our power? Why is it hovering at, like, exactly... It's very slowly draining power. Oh. Is it night time? Not even close. Exactly that. It looked like there would be trains facing each other on that long stretch. But if it works, it works. Uh, there are trains facing each other. They just have to wait for each other. I just haven't bothered putting in another line, which I probably should. Let's see. Do we have any coal in storage right now? We do not. We literally just finished shoving it back into these chests. Good timing. Again. It has been a day for good timing. 
Um, but yeah, we may as well... We may as well run another... This is the laziest patch. Perfect. What? Oh. Oh, the pylon is in the way. Okay, how about this? Ugh. Nothing dodgy about this. Don't don't worry. Just don't look. It's fine. We're gonna run this one over here. Fantastic. Some signals would be a good idea. I don't think that makes a difference, actually. Yeah, we already tried that experiment. Um, but yeah, that should... That should give our trains uh, a bit more... How you say throughput. Alright, let's stop jumping around. I've, I've gone from distraction to distraction lately. Uh, I wanted to build this thing. And we've got the scaffolding in place now. I am very pleased with this design. Um, modulo, though. Oh, we need to actually get that input. So we're currently outputting one for all of these. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, but when we output to... When it goes to 600... Well, it's never going to go to 600. We would need a timer here. Yeah... Uh, I don't... I don't see how this is going to reduce the Combinator count. Greetings, Night Dancer. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oil into rocket fuel would be my guess. Oil into rocket fuel. Oh, replying to... Okay, yep. Do you use that much coal... What was that question? Open thread. Do you use that much coal that you need coal core fragments? Yes. What are your biggest coal consumers? That's a good question. Uh, plastic at the moment, I would imagine. We also put a lot of it into explosives because we're using a bunch of delivery cannon capsules, but also uh, material science three has a couple of recipes that consume 20 explosives per data card, or at least one. Uh, yeah, no, it's actually just one. And we're actually still accumulating those. Okay, I am excited about implementing this thing. Uh, also, wow, this is taking its sweet time. Oh, I should just, if I put a request a chest here, is this going to make a loop? I hope not. Why don't we turn this around? Request from buffer chests and stack inserter here. Why do we only have seven logistic bots? Total logistic bots. Oh. Yeah, dope. If I'm going to do it this way, I need a constant combinator. Um, to say how many of each I want. Uh, logistic bot. 
destruction bot as negative. And we're going to set filters blacklist. Total construction bots as construction bots. Total logistic bots as logistic bots. Um, and that should... We've gone over. Oh, we're taking from the outpost. <laughs> okay, um, I think I'll send you back to Nalvis Orbit. Is there anything else I need from the outposter? Uh, I don't think so. I need more spaceship clamps. I need it to go pick those up. Nervous Orbit. Go. And logistic bots are at 40. Um, what if we had more logistic bots in this chest? We're going to shove them into here. Uh, I think I literally just want this to be... Logistic bot equals zero. Once we've got one logistic bot, we'll stop picking from that chest. What? 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 Okay, so requester chests and buffer chests take from roboports. Since when? How am I supposed to bring repair packs in with a buffer chest? And... I guess I need to add one here. Except... No, that's going to request from buffer chest. This is maddening. If I make this a buffer chest... How did I do it before? I'm sure we've got outposts that um, receive uh, receive uh, repair packs, among other things. This one was a little bit complicated. Um, I hope I don't have to resort to this, but we've got a bunch of positive signals for stuff that we're requesting. We set requests on a requester chest. Shove it into... Uh, as soon as we've got any of those in these buffer chests, we remove those requests. And then... We've got some stuff left over after the uh, ship leaves. I feel like I shouldn't have to go that far. But maybe I do. Just for some repair packs. So... Request a chest? Arithmetic Combinator. Constant Combinator. Read from chest. Multiply by... Negative something. Repair pack. Let's say we want a hundred repair packs. Set requests. Request from buffer chest. We've got a hundred here, so it's not requesting. Okay. Give to me all of the repair packs, please. We are requesting repair packs. And then... 
we are requesting fewer repair packs. Oh, I thought the bots would be rushing them back and forth. But they're actually not. Okay, they are a little bit... I could set this to, like, times negative two or something. Yeah. Seems a little odd that we should need that just to unload some repair packs, but that works. So the long arm is just to get the first logistic bot in place. If we were to somehow lose them. Okay. Um, I'm gonna copy this over to here in case I forget. Where would be a good spot? Right about here. And we've got our ammo, do we? We must have. We yeah, this guy arrived. How much media defense installation ammo do we have? Lots and lots. Input signals, 915 media defense installation ammo. Therefore, we are not sending the signal to bring our ship over. Uh, let's send this thing... Well, I should, I should do it with circuitry. Uh, if media defense installation ammo equals zero, I'll put everything input count. Nervous Orbit, Ship Launch. Uh, we actually are already doing that, we just haven't connected the red wire yet. So this should be it. And away we go. Fantastic. What? Why did it come back? No. No, stop, 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 stop. Oh. Oh. I left that signal there when I was playing with it and demonstrating something. That's why. Okay. Didn't lose a whole lot of ion stream just for that, at least. This should be it. Fantastic. How's our power? Uh, we are draining accumulator charge. How fast are we going? 58 already. And you can see the bonus percentage of the flat solar panel dropping by the second. But initially we have an ETA of like six minutes. Um, and because this is video game space soup, we immediately slow down when we stop thrusting, so it's not like we're going to be able to use that to coast in. Okay. Uh, let's probably send you back to Nervous Orbit. And same go- Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 I need that. I need that for myself. I forgot I sent the- <laughs> I forgot I sent the, uh, outposter back to Nervous Orbit. <laughs> I'll just leave myself stranded to slowly bake to death, running out of life support. That seems good. I also may have slightly forgotten to finish building this. So this part is all going to be the same. This part is requesting 48 star probe. And this part is just passive provider. I actually need... um. 
a spaceship to come back with clamps. Now that I think about it, I was going to do that with this one. Yeah. Could you please visit me at Calidus? Calidus Orbit. Fantastic. Oh, chat was moving. I think it was because I had that thread open. Uh, how do you get rid of the water you get from core fragments? One way you can do it is with a electric boiler. There's a recipe that literally just turns it into steam, gets rid of it. As in, outgasses it. Do you have pulverizer setups for each kind of core fragment? Indeed. Uh, most of them are identical. So usually you get 16 core fragments of a type, 5 vanilla core fragments in 16 seconds, 10 holmenite, 1 stone, um, except for uh, uranium, where the uranium is much, much slower than the core fragments. Um, and oil... Is this oil? No, that's... Uh, oil. Oil, I think, is still over here somewhere. Uh, crude oil outputs, believe it or not, crude oil. Uh, but yeah, most of them are exactly the same shape. Do you need the packs in the RoboPort? Not really, I'm just, I'm pretty sure they used to stay in the RoboPort um, until they were needed somewhere. I can see how it would be an advantage to be able to have them taken out of the RoboPort and, like, evenly distributed across buffer chests. Uh, but it can also be a bit of a nuisance. You are being pulled by the sun's gravity, so it still wouldn't be ideal. That's true. When I did core fragments, I used the water to process vulcanite. Uh, we could do that. But I, if I recall correctly, this is on a, this is our most recent build for vanilla core fragments. Um, with uh, productivity sixes and the minimum number of efficiency modules to get negative 80%, I believe. Uh, 48 machines. We're looking at 795 water per second. That's a little bit difficult to get rid of, at least unless we're piping it directly away to another build, and then that build has to always be demanding water. You could also set up some conditions with a pump so that you only uh, you only vaporize the water if there's too much of it. That's what I wanted to see yesterday when I looked at this. Beautiful. The sushi must flow. Okay. Um, I need clamps before I can put in clamp IDs. Uh, this should be... Negative one star probe. Anything equals negative one output everything input count. So if we've run out of whatever resource, it should take off. Uh, if star probe data is greater than or equal to almost full, take off and go to Navis Orbit. Fantastic. Uh, do I have to... I don't have to set a recipe or anything on this thing. We just put in a different... Uh, a different type of probe, right? I mostly lurk around here, so I just wanted to say this is a very cozy stream to keep in the background when I work on my own stuff. Thank you. Uh, Sloda, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You use more water than it produces in the next steps. 
So I just had a water tank that I topped off from a lake. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Ragathian also. Welcome, welcome. Now, the hotbox should be on its way, so I can actually send the joyride back to Arvis Orbit. I did check my life support. We've got um, 46 stacks remain. Yeah, we've only got 11 hours, closer to 12 hours of life support here. I don't know if we're going to make it. How long are you planning on streaming today? Um, maybe another 40 minutes or so? Oh, we uh, picked up all that stuff that I was using for testing here. Uh, but yeah, that is... I'm glad I thought of this. Multi-timer. Okay, I need to implement that. Um, each less than 600. So this is 10 seconds. I think that's a bit short. I want to make it something like... How long does it actually take? The recipe itself for the delivery cannons is uh, 5 seconds. And we can't speed buff it. However, we also have to take into account how long it takes the energy to recharge. And it does bottleneck on recharging this thing. Um, it's not like we can just give it more energy. Kind of hard to get a bead on exactly how long this takes, especially with the EPS a bit lower. I'm thinking 30 seconds. Pulsing every 30 seconds should be sufficient, even for... Uh, even for Pentium. Well, this one... Hold on. 946 megajoules. But to send it to Pentium is only 756. Interesting. It's only the sending it there that we're concerned with. So I think 30 seconds will be good enough. 1800. You should try implement the timer as an arithmetic combinator with a modulo. That way you only need one combinator. Uh, someone said that already, but the problem is... Uh, instead of getting a positive value out every however many ticks, so let's go, let's go each modulo 60. So every second, um, these output signals are going to change. Wait. Yeah, I, I would need another timer back here. Each less than 18k output each input count. Uh, wait, what am I doing? Each modulo 60. Okay. So every 60 ticks, it's going to stop sending a signal for one tick. And I actually want the opposite of that. So it's going to take another combinator anyway. Um, also, no, I do need an, I do need this for a timer, don't I? Like, we've got the each less than 18k output each input count. And then we've got each equal to one output one. It could be e equal to anything. But, like, if we're going to modulo the result from this, that's still two combinators. The trick is in the loop that does the increasing, not if the inserter has equals one as the condition. What exactly are you proposing to build? Like, can you describe both, like the one combinator that we're going to build here? What we've got is when we are requesting a thing, we're sending a signal of one. Um, 
and we want to only pulse that one once every, let's say, 1800 ticks. You do the loop back on the arithmetic... Oh, right, of course. Okay. Derp. Yeah, it is... That is what I had in my... That is what I was trying to describe earlier. I just derped on the wire, but... um. Again, the problem is, instead of an absence of a signal, uh, I'm looking for the signal itself as a, a signal to insert the delivery cannon capsule. And I'm not going to save one combinator by changing it so that, like, flat solar panel has to equal zero, because if something breaks on the other end, we're going to start spamming whatever resource it is by cannon, and that's going to cause problems. On the reset, the signal is 1, so it should equal 1. Um, I feel like there's going to be a condition where that's going to be a problem. Like, okay, let's say we stop requesting flat solar panel. Flat solar panel is stuck on 47. So if we're, if we're doing 30 seconds, like 1800 ticks, one time out of 1800, it's going to get stuck on one, and we're just going to constantly send, uh, well, it's going to be explosives, realistically, but you can't send flat solar panels by cannon, but if it was flat solar panels, um, if that gets stuck on one, we're going to be just endlessly sending flat solar panels. And the condition is never going to be met that we stop asking for more flat solar panels. And we're going to keep sending cannons until something is destroyed. If it loses power, the signal goes to zero. Uh, yeah, if this signal goes to zero, this signal gets stuck at whatever value it happened to be at. You can put the condition on any value between 1 and 60. Uh, yeah, it'll just have a different... Like, if this was equal to 47... Um, oops. 47? Uh, then... No, let's forget these ones for now. Then, all of a sudden, we're constantly trying to send whatever resource this is. When the request for it has ceased. It's only the arithmetic combinator that needs power, the constant combinator does not. The constant combinator represents um, that we are asking for something at the other end. So the constant combinator is simulating this output right here. So we recognize that there's no explosives or less than x explosives in the chest. Um, and we send a signal saying, please send explosives. Uh, so whenever the... Whenever the chest would be empty, the timer would be ticking up with the modulo. Um... Once we do have... Let's, let's call it explosives. Just to make it clear. Once we do have... We have zero explosives, so the timer is ticking. Uh, we receive some explosives, so the timer stops. And if the timer just happens to stop on one, or whatever value it is... Um, oh look, 47... Oh, that's the flat solar panel. 57. Uh, if it just happens to stay on... We stop asking for explosives if it just happens to stay on whatever value it is. We're going to send way too many explosives. This is the signal that we get, the lack of signal that we get when we don't need any more explosives. So yeah, I don't see a way that we can reduce it to one combinator. Um without either using 
this has to be zero, maybe, which is bad for previously mentioned reasons. Um, if something breaks on the other end, we're going to be receiving no signal. Um, or it can get stuck at a arbitrary value, which we're looking for to send the uh, to send the resources. Wouldn't you have the same issue with the dual combinator setup below? Uh, the dual combinator setup below is. Uh, let's see. So, let me just get rid of these for now. Okay, so every 30 seconds... Hmm. I wonder if I could put a... You might be right about that. I wonder if I could put a each less than or equal to 18k output each. Oh, I ran into this problem over here. I think I found a solution to it. What was it? We've got a timer for crisscross symbol, which means we're going to destroy something. Uh, everything greater than or equal to... Yeah, we need another combinator to just not let that through. So we've got the timer, and then we've got one, two, three conditions. How would that work in this use case? The way I, th the way I would do it is leave the timer running at all times and just suppresses the ticks if the destination is full. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. So if that's the case, why you want to set up timer? Uh, so, story time. Um, Henigam requires a lot of explosives um, because we are making a lot of delivery cannon capsules. Um, we actually set up, maybe we need three, maybe we need four. We set up four delivery cannons sending explosives to Kenyon. However, that caused problems because, well, what I want to do is set this so that we're trying to get four stacks of explosives in the chest at any given time. Um, the trouble is, if we just listen for a signal saying, please send explosives, and then activate this, uh, inserter it's going to it's going to swing more than once like we just saw we uh, so what i did instead was added a pulse generator here it takes a constant signal and turns it into a signal that we just hear for one tick so it's just long enough to make the inserter pick up a single delivery cannon capsule um this is working for the moment, but the reason this caused problems on Pentium and not uh, Via Terra, where we did the same thing, is on Via Terra we didn't ask for extra explosives. I did anticipate that if we were to somehow run out of delivery cannon capsules, and we receive a pulse here, and we don't put a capsule in, and none of these do, um, we're going to get stuck where, automatically at least, um, it's never going to send any more explosives, because it's receiving a uh, request for explosives, it's already pulsed it through, until that signal changes, it's not going to pulse it again. Uh, that condition, or something similar to that condition, was met over here because we requested extra explosives. So instead of a single single signal of one on this constant combinator, where we measure the chest as well, 
and we say each less than or equal to one output one. Um, instead of one, as in this has to be zero before we will request a resource, uh, this was set to only request a resource, uh, to continue requesting a resource when we had less than 200 or so. So we got our pulse, we sent explosives, we didn't get to the point of having 200, or is it like 201 uh, explosives? Wait, I think it's 199. Anyway, we didn't get to the point of having about that explosives in the chest. And we were still receiving the, um, uh, the signal to send explosives and it had already been pulsed. So that fell apart. So what I really want here is a pulse system that is also a timer system. Um, so if we're requesting, for example, explosives, uh, it's going to pulse. And then if we are still requesting explosives, like 30 seconds later, and the signal hasn't changed, we're going to pulse it again. And we're just thinking about how to do that with the minimal number of combinators, if we can. An RS latch. I think I have one of those in here. Oh, that's the basic latch that I keep using. Um, reading an accumulator. If it's less than 25 green. If it's greater than 20... Well, some other number. Uh, greater than 30 red. I feel like I'm better at describing it myself now, actually. So, your basic latch is three decider combinators. Two of them have conditions. The other one is a memory cell linked to its own input. Uh, and the memory cell says, green. if green is greater than red, output green one. So, the moment we give that a green signal... Um, even if we stop sending the green signal, it's going to hold on to it. And then once we send a red signal, um, it's going to lose that signal. So we could, for example, switch on a power switch when an accumulator drops to 10%, or switch it off either way, and then we don't change that state on the power switch until the accumulator is fully charged, for example. Um, so that way, for things like, say, cracking um, from one oil product to the next, you can... you can have it hold on to what it's doing for a little while instead of flicking on and off frequently. RS latch is overkill, all it needs is a memory cell. As I understand, because you want only one shot of delivery every time? Yes, but... Um, I want that, but... Another attempt every 30 seconds. In case we're still sending the request for... That resource. So basically, instead of a pulse generator, I want... A pulse generator, but once every 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds from when the... Uh, 30 seconds from when the request first started. Um, I'm going to take a short break and let that question marinate, marinate? marinate in my brain for a moment. Um, let's... whoops. Hot box. Hot box. There we go. Let's, uh... I, I clicked on this as if it was the console. I think I was doing that yesterday as well. Let's land you here. And I'm gonna hop inside. Oh, there's what I sent for. Our spaceship clamps. 
Fantastic. Oop, in we go. Alright. I'm going to think on that for a minute. And leave you with LTN screensaver. Back in a few minutes. You all play nice now. Minimum combinators would be more chests. Yeah. That's that's technically correct. The worst kind of correct. I'm kidding. But no, the uh uh the little challenge of screensaver off. Uh the little challenge that we're setting ourselves here is how few combinators can we solve this problem with, with the smallest, with the one chest. The goal is full throughput um, for the seven resources that we need here uh, with just one chest. It's kind of an interesting problem. Did we put all of our spaceship clamps here? Cool. Uh, I think it was negative five that we were going to go for our anchors for this particular drop-off. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, also, I kind of forgot... We don't have long trains picking up these satellites. Where are they? How have we not made any satellites? Okay, we've made 63. Where did they go? 
products finished, 63. We don't have any uranium fuel cells. That's not what I was expecting. Um, we should have uranium fuel cells. It's definitely in the rail network. Let me see if I can reach this over here. 8.4k uranium fuel cells. There's definitely enough to trigger a delivery. Minimum train length 3, max 6. Oh, I could have looked up here as well. Uh, did I set the requester wrong somehow? Request stack threshold 3, that, there's your problem. Okay, why don't I just bump this up a little bit? Um, and where exactly have our star probes gone? I would imagine there's only one place they could go, but I don't see them here. Also, I don't know how we missed this bit of wire. Oh, uh, someone asked, can you show the lower combinator again, please? Uh, sure. Where was it? This one? Do you mean like these two? Oh, for the latch. Uh, so this combinator here is connected to its own input. It takes one tick for a combinator to do something but the wiring is instantaneous. So if this thing has received a green signal and it doesn't receive a red signal, uh, at the beginning of a tick, well, let's say on tick zero, it receives green signal. Uh, on tick one, it says green signal is greater than red signal output green signal. And... Uh, Depending on how you look at it, like on tick 0 it receives this, on tick 1 it outputs that, so on tick 1 it receives a green signal again. So that just goes round and round. This is the smallest circle that you can make. Uh, it's just one combinator. So if we say green signal has to be greater than red signal, uh, and we have a condition for green signal and a condition for red signal, if we are looking at say, an amount of fluid or accumulator charge or something, and we want this to stay switched on between these two values that trigger these conditions, that's how that works. How do you reset it? Uh, with the red signal. So the go-to example, if you're using a power switch, uh, is a accumulator. I don't actually have a regular accumulator anymore. Um, so we're going to read. <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to read from that, and we're going to say if accumulator charge is uh, is full. Let's just set that to green greater than zero. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that for a sec. Now then. Uh, if accumulated charge drops down to, let's say, 20%, uh, we're going to send the red signal, which we are currently doing. This is taking longer than expected to charge. What power network are we on here? All of it? Really? We've got like 10 gigawatts of spare p Oh, this is the limit to how quickly an accumulator can charge. I understood, thank you. No worries, you're welcome. 
Yep, and you can use the latch to track a pending delivery request without a timer. S on received request, R on sent cargo. Uh, as in set request, uh, set reset. Is that the nomenclature? I would prefer not to have to use three combinators for each resource, or each set of resources at best. If it can be helped. Um, how would we do this with multiple... We could say... Output each, each greater than something, output each, each less than something, output. If we want negative of that each, we need another combinator. I really wish you could just put in a specific constant in the output field here. Just replace the green with a resource and the red with a huge negative value of the same resource. Yeah, the negative requires a arithmetic combinator as well. Is the thing I was hoping to avoid, but we'll see where this goes. So, each greater than something, let's say greater than zero, output each one. Each less than, I don't know... We would have to, we would have to probably just read the amounts in the chests directly. So let's imagine we're doing that. Um, each equal to zero, or each less than, I don't know, 50. We have different stack sizes though. Let's just say each equal to zero. Uh, for starters, output each one, and if we want to, if we want to have specific thresholds for the different resources, we can actually have a constant combinator and put different negative values here or something. Um, but we'll say each equal to zero, or less than or equal to zero, output each one. And then this will be times negative a million or something. Uh, each greater than zero, output each input count. Or each one for that matter. So it'll hold... Uh, once something drops to zero, let's say... Well, we actually need, like, a signal to show that something is at zero. Let's say negative one. I'm going to get rid of the accumulator charge input here. Uh, get rid of that red wire. That's doubling the input. Okay, so each less than or equal to zero, output each one. So we've got no A's. Let's let's make this something more less abstract. Uh, we've got no explosives in the chest. We have as we have a negative value. We're either low on explosives or have zero explosives, depending on how we're setting this up. So we are low on explosives. Output one. Um, you should not be outputting a red signal, I think. Uh, each greater than some amount. Let's say... Well, if we're, if we're using this constant combinator to throw things off, this would have to be that plus whatever. Let's just say each greater than zero. 
output. Uh, this doesn't go here anymore. We're going to make that negative. Uh, let's see. Each greater than zero, output each. And instead of one, it's negative a million. So, okay, let's get rid of the A. We've got no explosives. We send a signal of one explosives through this thing. Um, we are not sending a signal from this thing. These two should always be mutually exclusive. Uh, and preferably there should be like a gap between them. If we're going to bother with this latch. Uh, input signals. Oh, sorry, output signals. One explosive. So we're holding on to that. Uh, so we no longer have... We're no longer really low on explosives. We hold on to the request for explosives. We get to positive 50 explosives. We send the negative here. And each greater than zero output... Wait, what? That should be... Oh, that was meant to be 51, I guess. Each greater than 50. I didn't switch this on. There's your problem. Negative a million. So we're going to get rid of that. Except that's not actually the problem I'm trying to solve. That is a good illustration of the latch, though. If anyone's still trying to understand it. Just replace the green with a resource and the red with a huge negative value of the same resource. You should not stop putting in capsules. You should stop putting in the resource that you want to send. That way the amount of capsules in the cannon is irrelevant. Um, with a lot of these, the time it takes the capsule to get to its destination so that we receive a different signal um, we can actually put in a whole other stack of that resource. And I don't... I, I have thought about that. I have thought about, like, limiting the stack size or using just fast inserters or something. Um, but that kind of defeats part of the purpose. We're going to slow down. Still needs to know how many resources are in transit in order to stop sending resources in time. That said, I'd just make sure there's enough buffer storage in the destination to treat the travel time as an SR latch. Why the amount... but why the amount in transit? Capsules don't take minutes to travel, or am I wrong? Uh, they take... 5 seconds plus maybe 5 to 10 or so. Uh, they do take long enough. They, they take far more than long enough that, that we're going to keep shoving in more capsules. Or even if we control it by the resource, um, we could put in multiple steps. Well, for one thing, this thing does put multiple stacks into the machine. And we can't read how much is in the machine here. Uh, for the input resource. Maybe a timer should set up at the delivery cannon rather than at orbit. Uh, I mean, we can put the logic on this side or before it gets here. Either way is fine. Like, this is the... Think of the signal transmitter to the signal receiver as just like a wire connection, basically. Um, either way, I mean, unless we implement, like, a counting machine to keep track of how many things we've sent in the meantime, which is more combinators than I want to use. But we're dealing with that lag time either way. Uh... 
Anyway, let's just continue for now with expanding our infrastructure for a second. I think I want to take a little break from head scratches. Uh, we should have... I think I only sent this thing here for the clamps. So this is already done. We don't actually need this scaffolding here. In fact, the spaceship is going to get rid of it when it lands. Uh, I kind of need a storage chest. Let's throw one down here. Just trying to minimize a buffer though, so you can just brute force it and accept that you're sending maybe five to ten more stacks than intended. If I do that, um, I, I mean I was doing that, the problem is we ended up sending so many explosives that these, uh, the chest got overfilled and, I mean it wasn't just explosives but other resources were getting sent, you know, multiple at a time. And with seven different resources and we want to send extra explosives, uh, it's actually seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, ten stacks that we get at a time, plus the lag, plus putting multiple delivery cannon capsules in. Like here we've got a recipe full, plus this delivery cannon capsule, plus this delivery cannon capsule. So it's actually three times this thing is going to fire, even if this inserter is switched off which it is. So for that reason, with a certain number of cannons aimed at this one chest, we don't fire unless it's empty, uh, is the simple solution to that. But shoving lots of different resources into this one chest and trying to get decent throughput, um, that's why we've run into issues here. And there are easier ways to solve it, but um, I just find chasing the more complicated and clever solution a bit more fun sometimes. It also leads to having a few clever tricks up your sleeve sometimes. Okay, uh, I think... I'll just leave this as it is, I guess. I think we're ready to go. I never did figure out where those um, uh, star probes ended up. Oh. I also need to fix this. How many? 160. Right. This loader needs to know exactly how many... Uh, probes fit in a train. Not that you could go wrong with the stack size of one inserting this. Shove the chest contents into active providers. I suspect it's quite wasteful compared to just using the good old cargo rockets. Um, well, we don't need any liquid rocket fuel for the cannons, but yeah, it is more that it's easy to do it this way. Cargo rockets are a headache. You need the, you need to recycle the cargo rocket sections, um, send those back and forth, and the capsules, you need to fuel them. They crash all the time. Uh, we've done our time with cargo rockets, is how I would put it. Let's go back to Nalvis Orbit for now. And I'll probably catch a ride on the outposter. I need to head to the asteroid, uh, asteroid belt to set up a receiving station for delivery cannon ammo. Not to mention set up the cannons themselves. 
Uh, do we have those cannons? We do. Not as many as I would like. Let's go for... What was it? Uh, 18 that I set up last time. Since we've got an overabundance of power, may as well. What's the next research plan? Uh, I was working towards... The reason we're doing this uh, space probe stuff, actually. Uh, there's two. There's... Astronomic and Energy that we've basically finished, except for the probe data. So for this one, I need to go to an asteroid belt and launch a probe. And for this one, I need to go to the orbit of the sun and launch a probe. Um, but yeah, we've actually got the other three data cards for both Astro and Energy 4 already complete. What? What? Why are we not taking... Why are we not taking away the cool thermo fluid? hundred and eighty K. This is eighty that this is just barely enough to not to trigger a delivery. How much can we fit here? Two hundred thousand. Wait, what? No. Twenty five, fifty, a hundred, two hundred thousand. And we're looking for a hundred and eighty K. But we have room I should probably just connect all of these. And uh two, four, six, eight hundred thousand is what we can fit here. So let's call it seven hundred and eighty thousand that we're trying to put in here. I don't know why we haven't had the same problem with cold thermal fluid. Uh, for now, I think I will trial it with cool thermo fluid. But we should see a train yep, coming to pick up that fluid now. Okay. What was I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got one, two... Uh, three? Of the tier four astro science. Uh, things already built. Same goes for tier 4 energy science. We've got everything except the probe data. And we've already got something in place to build our tier 4 science packs. Although I don't think I've set the recipes on... Oh, I stand corrected. We've already got the recipes set for Astro 4, and we've got the requests. I haven't put the requests here. Um, probably something similar for Energy 4. I have actually put the requests here. So everything is in place except for Star Group data. Um, let's update this one. First is Dark Energy. Dark Energy. Two train loads, uh, micro black hole, zero point energy, and last but not least, uh, asteroid belt probe data. So we're actually quite close uh, to to getting a bunch of research done of two new types of science pack. We just need to finish these two outposts. Delivery cannon logistic use more resource than rocket silo logistic. It, it does 
in general with like metal resources for example absolutely um although currently all of our rocket fuel is going to spaceships so not having to use rocket fuel to send stuff to those outposts is actually kind of helpful Wait, where are you going with that? Oh, okay, fair enough. Delivery cannon is good for low requirement material. I set up delivery cannon array sending media ammo in my star system. How long is this game save currently? Uh, yes. We're creeping towards a month. It is not a short playthrough, nor am I trying to go fast. As you can see from the, what, half an hour plus long diversion, just thinking about Combinators. Um, where were we? Yep, this is all working for now anyway. The only question is how we improve upon it. And considering... Considering the delivery cannon uh, capsules are actually saturated on this belt, uh, if, we're, if we're being strictly practical, we really shouldn't be worrying about this so much. Via Terra, are you also saturated. Fantastic. Beautiful. Uh, I wonder if we've caught up with plastic. We still... No, wait, that is plastic. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Give me, give me those Holmium cables. That's what I like to see. How has our production for Holmium looked lately? It's kind of hard to tell. Let's look at Holmium cables specifically. That is a big increase over what we were experiencing before. I think... Well, we should be seeing Holmium Cable wherever we need it. Yeah. It's looking good. WTF? WTF. Alright, let's drop in on... Oh, I went to the wrong place. Elvis Orbit. Uh, the night. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Um, where are we going next? I really need to get the media defense stuff set up at the asteroid field. And I think... Oh, that's right. I was wondering where on earth these... Uh, star probes had gone to because we've made 73 of them and I certainly don't recall requesting them anywhere else but I don't see any star probes here so uh, it's a mystery I, I have no idea where our star probes have gone that's kind of concerning we didn't... Oh, are they in the ships? No, they're not in the ships. Oh, that's requesting the wrong type. Asteroid belt probe. Star probe. 48. Yeah, I'm actually really confused about... about where our star probes have gone. Hmm. 
Well, we've been making them... We made one a minute ago. Oh! That was not caught in the act. Is this it? No. You're dropping off rocket fuel. Uh... How many trains have we got coming in here? Does this have the same name? No, I updated that one. This one has finished nine products, and I also don't know where those went. They should be in these chests. Uh, our request stack threshold is one six. Oh, I think I remember. Yeah, because this is only being delivered by short trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I remember pointing this out. There's only short trains picking this up from here, so I'm bringing them all... I don't remember making the requests for them. I had the idea to bring all of those probes over here. 73 stars probe, 7 other probe. Okay, I don't know where two of those probes went, but... Yeah. I, I brought them over here so that they could be given to a long train. Um, it's either that or... Turn these into active provider chests, and then we can allow both short and long trains. And then we need storage for... Uh, for those items here. Which is less of a waste of energy. I mean, having an extra train run is kind of silly, I guess. But yeah, I, I can't actually find a request for them. I had the idea. I can't find the request on the constant combinators. Oh, I think I know what the problem... I forgot... Okay. I see. Well, there's your problem. Um... I actually forgot to connect this wire to say uh, star probe has to be, well no, asteroid probe, asteroid belt probe has to be greater than zero coming from the logistic train stop output. So this is, this is disabled at the moment. So what was happening is the trains were coming in, dropping off resources, and immediately getting star probes shoved into them. Or, not, mostly star probes. And then they go back to the depot. And then we have trash pickup, which brought it back to the mall. Okay, mystery solved. Uh, I think what I will do, though, is go with the plan to... Uh, do what we've done in other places where we have active provider chests taking resources from the trains. Uh, we'll have filtered storage chests right next to where these things go. Nice and close, actually. And we'll need to either read from the logistic network or better yet read from these chests directly to know what we've got. Um, but yeah. Oops. No, 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 no. No. What? That was weird. Um, so this is going to be Asteroid Belt Probe. And these are going to be... Uh, 
uh, space probe rocket. Actually, copy that so we get the wire. And same stuff over here. This one's going to be a bit different, of course. Just have to change that filter to Star Probe. And I don't suppose we can reach circuit wire all the way across here. I could do it like this. Just make this unconditional. It might end up looking a bit tacky if we do it this way. I might throw in some pylons connecting the wires just for the look of it. Um, but that wire is going to go all the way back to... Well, actually here. Because if the stuff is already in the active provider chests... Um, Oh, these don't have to be stack filters, therefore we can put two filters on them. Yeah, so this is going to be a space probe rocket and star probe. This will instead be asteroid help probe. Connect that to LTN. Uh, same thing over here. Copy that unconditional condition. That looks really tacky. I'll add some holes to clean it up a bit. Uh, but yeah, now we can get short trains delivering here without issue. Uh, request stack threshold? Hmm. The only trouble is I can't have a request stack threshold of 160 for this, but only 40 for this. Oh well. It's fine. It's probably fine. The probe data cards stacked to a thousand? Really? Wait, no, I think I checked this. Um, let's see, constant combinator. Uh, different constant combinator. Data card. Stack size 50. Stack size 50. Um, regardless, will be... I don't know what arbitrary limit I'll set before we pick up the cards. Probably just whatever fits in here. Unless it does stack to a thousand, despite what the debug says. We can always manually send some to get started. There's our properly delivered um, probes. Well, it's being delivered from the mall, but it's still valid. Fantastic. Alright, I'll throw in a quick save there. And let's see who is streaming Factorio for today. I may be wrong then, fair enough. Uh, tumbling Satellite, probably give them a raid.
or maybe a small bean? I think I did a small bean like yesterday or the day before. Uh, why don't we give Robust a go? Thanks for the stream. It was fun. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for the stream. No worries. Thank you for hanging out. All right. We're going from SE to SE plus K2. Murica time? I don't know about that. Okay. I'm kidding. Uh, let's drop in on Robust. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you like, if you have any questions or anything, by all means. And, uh... And nothing. I think that's everything. I forgot to hit the raid button. Raid incoming. All right, take care, guys. I do not... I have no interest. I have no interest in the worms. They may look like willies, okay? When they're dead, they may look like willies, but I would not do anything. Wait! Oh! Oh lordy! Oh lordy! Mr. T Hacks! Hello! Welcome to the stream, everybody! Um. Wow! Hi! Mr. T Hacks! It is a pleasure to see you here, my friend! Uh. Welcome, Raiders! Yeah! Um. My name is Robust. Uh, I stream Factorial and Hardcore Minecraft, and we are planning out our we are planning out our blue.